Burns the troll with strength of stone Cave and mud his ancient home Blending ages milk and honey Folk with brass the mud men's irony All the tales of night and day Grit and magic steel and clay Got hidden swords Riddles be praise Our gods pats in a wild erase It's the, the fair before the foul The fair before the foul Midwest Dungeon Delvers, it's our weekly tabletop RPG show every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Central Time, called The Fair Before the Foul. Hey, Corn Steven, our amazing master of games, can you go ahead and take us away in our recap? Whatever you want to call it. Uh, we had a new introduction to the party named... Uh, King Mochi. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, his character was Dillian. Um, he is not going to be with us today unless he pops. Unless in. it's later. Yeah. <laughs> unless he pops. <laughs> um, as outside things have transpired, he's got some friends that he's interacting with outside that he hasn't seen for a while. So he is more than welcome to. Yeah dip out for a session um but beyond that um the group went back to camp uh got some political shenanigans started between the um uh the primus and several of the goblin tribe leaders uh made it back in time to integrate uh, another tribe into the conglomerate that you guys have made and in doing so um, attracted the attention of the final tribe of goblins the um, if I'm not mistaken the Grimclaws um, but you guys have established a fairly fairly good defensive position at this crossroad in the underground so we are about to embark on the defense of the crossroads and or if some amazingly good rolls happen the introduction of yet another tribe into the uh the fold wonderful in Yes, the less goblin blood we spill, the better. This, this is the most um, disagreeable goblin tribe. Um, I am aware. Like, uh, I'm pretty sure Rugger's been been informing me on how best to deal with the Grim Claws and we've been shoring up our defenses and Yes, you guys have been doing all the things. So with with that, um 
I think the recap is good. So we are at the stage now of playing the game. All right, so you guys have heard the horns and they are closing in on you guys. Oh, I did forget, Arg did teach the female troll how to do the Arg sneak. That's right. Oh yeah. The Arg deceptions and blending in with its surroundings. What's better than an invisible troll? Do invisible trolls. You're not wrong. I am trying my best to uh, make it so that Arg doesn't have to interact with the uh, Stone Gut game as much as possible. And that's the Dwarven Armored. Yes, those are the Dwarven Armored. Uh, Goblins. So then, um, you guys have, I believe, uh, a, like a day left until the uh, Grimclaws show up. If we've got a final day based off of, like, if we hear the horns in the morning, uh, I would like to spend a little bit of time with each goblin captain making sure that they know what their part in this siege is supposed to be. Alright. Well. Any, any core plans or are you just trying to like coordinate them uh, as best as you can manage. Um. So my my big thing is I want them to think that the easiest way into our gates is going to be through like the secretive goblin tunnels that the blood fangs use. Mm -hmm. Like that'd be like the weakest link, but then have them get like turned around by all the mazes in there and while they're in there have like a bunch of kill boxes set up in the tunnels where like the uh war tusks and the uh stone guts can just like slam into them and them like Arg get boxed in okay Arg is gonna come to um i blast I forgot your name. Biddlesby. 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 He goes to Biddlesby and asks for um, a gold coin again. Since he returned the, uh, the other one. He's going to use his trap this time. <laughs> two gold coins. He needs two gold coins because we have two invisible trolls. Okay. Uh, all right. Biddlesby. Need two gold coins for trap. Are you, are you sure, Arg? Yes, we'll return just like last time. Okay. Gives two gold. Gives two gold. So Arg is going to coordinate with the goblins to create uh, um, uh, what looks like um, rest areas in the tunnels that have um, hashes. They can be used to get in and out, right? Mm -hmm. And so that they're big enough for the trolls. And then he and the female troll are going to be traps inside these areas. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna be in the you're gonna be underground in the underground. Mm -hmm. Working working with uh, Biddlesby's plan. Okay, okay. So using the, using the <laughs> tunnels, Arg and uh, Arget are going to uh, be horrifying things to find in the trench. 
Ooh. See, what's All a right. good name? Um, Argon. I'll think on it. I'll, I'll I'll get a I'll get a new name, something better. Yeah. Uh. Okay. So. Uh. Yeah. You guys start tunneling in. Um. Okay. Um, go ahead and make a an influence check there, uh, Middlesby. <laughs> and then yeah, we'll we'll do that. And then I'll have you do a stealth check, um, Arg. Stealth, right, stealth. Yep. When you speak to me, I should pay attention. That's all good. It's all Sorry. Good. You're good, you're good. It's been one of those days. All right, let's see here, stealth. Uh, it's going to be 19. All right. You and the female troll disappear <laughs> in a red poof. Uh, Biddlesby, go ahead and make a influence check, if you wouldn't mind. All right. That influence, my good sir, is... Let me pull that up. Here we go. Ah. That is a 13. All right. So you oh, are. I have advantage because oh, oh, yep. I'm speaking with a non hostile soldier unit, aren't I? Yes, you are. As a commander, I have that. <laughs> oh, okay, there you I, go. That's, that's one of the class features that I haven't been using as I leveled up, and then I looked at my stuff and was like, why am I not using the things that I have? <laughs> Yes, it is important to use the abilities that you have. Nat 20. Nat 20. Okay, so you are coordinating almost effortlessly and like... Kind of like you're you're doing one of those Sherlock Holmes things where like the world stops. I'm breaks like down playing, into like I'm playing out like different siege scenarios before they yep. happen. And you're like, alright, this is how we're going to do this, guys. Um, so. All right. You see, Grimclaws will be pouring down this tunnel. That way, whenever Arg and his arg at dive in to destroy this battalion here, then you, Rugga, and your Dark Fang tribe can pincer those that are trying to run. <laughs> Victory. <laughs> Victory. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you're you're going through this whole process, and uh, the you're you're getting a lot of like, okay, goblins are like moving with like almost reasonable like military discipline. Like you you have shaped them into a unit. <laughs> um. I don't want to delay too much and and you know yes. drag heels too much so yes let's we're gonna have to just go and then going in Gu guiden will have to on the fly figure out what he's doing okay we will we will just on the all right so uh day approaches or the day closes out everything's yeah, you know, final preparations, movements have been made, uh, troop integrations and such are done. Um, as as the day is progressing, a uh, a small troop you you hear a small troop coming from the direction of the uh, the camp that you guys came from. Okay. Uh, that are requesting. Uh, Uh, Delian, that, that's the name. Sorry. To return back uh, to the camp, 
but uh, upon seeing this fortification and hearing the horns and such, um, a small, like, two, two individuals are taking Dillian back, whereas you have a small, say, not even a, not even a platoon, maybe a platoon of centaurs, armored. Why? That have decided to join you guys from the original camp. Auxiliary units, obviously. Ah. So, against, like, orders, they're staying because they see the situation about to hit us. Um, no, mostly... Mostly the orders were to come retrieve this guy, and because they're an auxiliary unit, you know, they move quick, and they they mostly stick together. Um, you know, kind of like the... Like you've noticed, there, there's particular um, racial divides in the Legion, where, you know, elves kind of stick together, gnomes kind of stick together. All of the different groups, though, one collective folk are... They have divided themselves inside the camp, whereas you're you're mixing the goblins in a way that works more cohesively. And this military genius that you're showing has inspired the centaurs to see how effective this is. Oh, wonderful. And, uh, so, a small platoon of uh, centaur... Uh, essentially cavalry are going to stay back and uh, assist. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know, the DM is being nice and giving us extra meat shields because he's like, I'm about to throw stuff at you. <laughs> well, not really meat shields. I mean, they're, they're light cavalry units, so, you know, you use them for typical, you know, Charging. Screening, not charges. You hit the flanks with them. Yeah, charges. <laughs> <laughs> smash it, smash them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, the uh, the night progresses. Uh, dawn, daylight, or not daylight. Uh, the morning comes, and uh, it is time. You see a horde of goblins uh, built kind of like the commander of the War Tusks. Ooh. That's, that's quite a lot. And you see a goblin that is about, about three heads taller than the uh, leader of the War Tusks. That's that's not right. What yeah, is he's he's about a third to half the size of Arg. What have they been playing with? Uh you do notice that this goblin in particular has several skulls draped from its like waistband. Some of them are very large skulls, indicative of uh, human heads. I have no love for the mudmen, but to parade their skulls like trophies is barbaric. Uh, you do see him uh, saunter forward uh, away from the, the massive horde of goblins behind him. Uh, I go to meet. You go out and meet him. This goblin is massive. Uh, even even to you, it he is big. Again, a third to half the size of Arg. Uh, and just monstrously I would say it almost looks like he's like mutated the level of muscle that is on his body is unnatural uh, 
Like, it doesn't look correct. In Goblin, I say, What mother birthed you? It kind of cocks its head to the side. And croaks out a very deep, bassy rumble of I'm not of mother. And he kind of like clenches his fists and you see the, the veins in his forearms and bicep just bulge out. You poor creature. Are yeah, you... it seems whatever intellect that has infected the War Tusk leader has not infected this one. I came to parlay with a captain of goblins. I see nothing before me than a monster waiting to be put down. Uh, it, as you say the word monster, he smiles and starts giggling. Um, I need you to make a... Uh, or wait. No, it's a... Is your psychic mystical defense. My mystical defense is 11. Uh, you watch his eyes do... You know, kind of like uh, whenever you're trying to use your mesmer or something like that, how your eyes will like flash just briefly. Okay. You see him, his eyes flash red, the like same red that you see when R disappears. What is happening? Um, he doesn't. He is unhappy at the fact that you are not cowering in fear at the moment. Oh, did he not beat 11? He did not beat 11. <laughs> uh, I, I look at him, and instead of fear or anger, he just sees pity. As you are displaying a pity towards him, he becomes enraged and grabs for his um, club, which looks to be like the leg bone of a horse. Oh, you... you m sick... sick beast. It's time uh, you... to put you down. Are you running or are you going to try and fight him out in the open uh i say it's time to put you down and i would like to hightail it into one of the goblin tunnels all right make a uh initiative do we have an initiative we don't this? have an initiative okay. yeah it's uh <clears throat> It's uh, whatever you're doing at the time of uh, combat start. So for me, it would be uh, stealth. Sneak. For him, yeah. it would be Influence like was what? The last thing that I did. Okay. So then, all right. Well, so wouldn't running be the last thing you did? Well, I did run then, so I guess athletics. Well, I mean. It between your talking to him and then like he's reaching for his weapon and then yeah that that's when the combat would begin so it would be still from your influence. uh your influence okay and then are you have stealth all right you three. plus three six six okay all right i've got a 14 on the die Plus my influence, which is five, so nineteen. All right. So you you 
manage to go before he does, uh, just barely. Uh, as he's reaching for the weapon, you you see like, oh, I am I am alone out here in this field of um, very angry, very large goblins. Yep. And it's time to go. <laughs> you hightail it to one of the goblin holes, and you dive in. See how effective is this? Um, what what do you have for your knowledge? Do you have any kind of like battle tactic? Yeah, battle tactics oh. is uh, one of my intelligence things, and I've got it ticked. Okay, uh, give me a battle tactics. See how effective this oh, is going to be. Right, and if I remember correctly, uh, do do. do I can, because I'm a combat leader at level 2, I can take the analyze creature or combat insight action for free. So before I lose sight of him, I'd like to analyze creature. Okay. Alright, and what does the analyze do? Um, that's a good question. I will, I will look at that. I think quick. that's an action. How do you spell analyze? I always get this wrong. N L I Z E. No. L Y Z. I always get that wrong. All right. Analyze creature. Just one. Spend one AP to attempt to recall or discern some information about a creature that you can see or hear. Make a DC 10 knowledge check. Success. You learn a piece of lore about the creature. Success for every five above that, you learn one creature statistic, PD, MD, attacks, abilities, resistances, vulnerabilities, immunities, etc. Ah. Okay. So, a knowledge check, then. Knowledge check, DC 10. DC 10. Seven plus five. Mm -hmm. So 12. 12 all together. Uh, all right. So then, um, you recall normal basic uh, goblin facts, but the thing that sticks out is that um, because this one is not like the War Tusk Leader and is a lot more primitive, um, you get the sense that, you know, you, they kind of rely on brute strength to overwhelm their enemies. Mm. All right. So, uh,. I would like to then use how many action points would it take for me to get to uh, Slink Skulk? Um, Slink Skulk would be he would would he be in the trenches or behind the wall? Uh, he's the Blood Fang leader, so the, right. the sneaky sneak guys. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm asking. Is he? Would he? Probably. Would you have had him in the in the well, tunnels, or would you have had definitely? Him behind the walls? And I think in the tunnels, since he's the one who like helped build them and knows them, right? Yeah, I'm kind of relying on him to be my gu my guide through this. Okay. Um, I would say that whenever you came out, he probably moved to the front of the into the front of where he thought you would be jumping into. All right. So I would say uh, two AP to get to him. All right. I spend the two action points to get to him. Okay. And then uh, using my commander's call, 
I can spend one action point and one stamina point to command a creature that I see within five spaces that can also see in here. The chosen creature can immediately take one of the following actions of my choice as a reaction for free. Uh, can only use each of the following commands once on each of my turns, which is fine. Uh, I only plan on using it once because uh, until I use uh, a help thing, I need to uh, recharge my stamina point. Okay. So my stamina point, I'm going to use, I'm going to say uh, to uh, Slink Skulk, uh, put a bolt between his eyes and uh, give him advantage on the attack. So I'm commanding him to attack uh, the leader of the Grim Claws with advantage. Okay. Uh, yeah, he, uh, you, you jump into the hole and say, shoot him, and he pops up, launches a shot into the leader, and just slaps him right in the shoulder. Um, takes, uh, takes some damage. Um, and then he pops his head right back down and looks at you like, uh, was that the best idea? <laughs> I didn't think they'd be that bestial. He kind of looks at you and goes, ah. Uh, it's kind of in the name. Either way, let's move. And I'd like to use, since this is still my first turn, uh, my combat leader class feature and grant a uh, slink skulk a d8 help die on his initiative okay uh, let me see what it is and because i gave a help thing my commander stamina triggers and i regain my stamina point okay no. All right. His, uh, his initiative is twenty-two. Nice. So uh, I have two action points left, and I'm going to save them because I have reaction actions that I can do. Okay. Uh, I will shout down the tunnel. Uh. Vanguard to me and attempt to uh, get as many goblins to my side for rally. Okay. Um, a bunch of war tusk goblins will uh, end up charging up to you. Nice. So I have a five space aura around me uh, and I would like to uh spend one of my remaining two action points to rally and give every single creature around me in that aura one additional temp HP. Okay. Commanding aura. Level 2 class feature. <laughs> Alright, alright. Okay. All right, I end my turn. All right, you end your turn. Um, Arg, I assume you're holding until um, something gets in your I can I can eat it range. Ah, uh, yeah, pretty much. So, uh, me and the female t troll whose name is now Megora. So, okay. Um, yeah, just chose a random troll name from the internet. Um, we are in these pockets. They're relatively near the entrance, but they're designed to look like they're exits to behind the wall, which they are. 
but they look like they're unguarded exits to behind the wall. Okay. They were invisible. All right. So you, uh, you guys are waiting. Um, so hmm? then, let's see. Uh, Shodan Ninja, a.k.a. Gaiden. Oh, okay. Hello, Gaiden. Greetings, greetings. Hello. We're going to have to get initiative from you here in a second. Figure yes. out what uh, you're doing. Yep, what would you have been doing um, as... This is a natural what? <laughs> no, sorry. Natural 20 in this one. Okay. Right? 20 whichever is 20. One, whichever one is the bad one. The, okay. Natural one. Uh, natural one is bad. Yep. Natural 20 one. is good in this one. Punish him. Okay. So, so you got a one? Yes. Uh, so while you're up on your your ledge looking down, um, you see uh, Biddlesby march out to go see this massive goblin. And you can see from the goblin's uh, waistband dangling skulls of like humans and other fairy folk. Um, and some words are exchanged that you can't hear as... Uh, Biddlesby doesn't look scared of this goblin at all, but instead you, you get the sense of like, oh, you poor thing. And whenever that happens, the goblin reaches for a massive, like, horse femur club. <laughs> and then Biddlesby runs and jumps into one of the holes where, uh, where one of the goblins pokes up, shoots the leader of the other goblins, and goes right back down. And that is all you see from your vantage point. <laughs> so what it what is what is Gaiden doing up in the that, uh, the, the the vantage point at the ceiling of the cave um so we've been engaged in combat yes. um yes um so is um Bilby just dove in a hole why did he dive in a hole uh he's we're using the hole to the hole's going to be basically where the battleground takes place, okay. for the most part. Uh, trying to get as many of the enemy goblins into the hole so that the uh, traps and stuff inside the goblin holes can uh, wreck havoc on their numbers. Yes. That, that would be reek, by the way. Mm, uh, yeah. Reek, wrecked. Yeah, it's actually the past tense. Sorry, it's actually the present tense of the word oh, yeah. rot. Your timing reeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for that. I did. I was unaware of which, which way to say that. Yeah, no, it's it's one of those words that I spent like fourteen hours researching one time because I got obsessed with it. So, all right. Um. <laughs> So we're, is, can I, I'm gonna try and uh, use my sling to knock some stalactites loose into the army of the others. All right. That would oh. mean that his initiative would be a attack roll. Um. Well, you would be flying. Or would it be stealth? That's right. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, so you're using your sling. However, uh, are you going to be doing it on the move, or are you going to be doing it uh, stationary? Um, whatever uh, leaning I need to, to get a crack at. 
I mean, because you took you took flight like a, a fuller flight for your uh, your racial feature, right? Yes. So you should be able to, if you wanted to, like not just like hover, but like actually go flying around up there a little bit. So you could. Uh, it depends on it depends entirely on how you're wanting to do it. You could either go with a uh, like an acrobatics or uh, awareness, maybe. I'll let you decide on uh, how you want to engage with uh, the initiative role. The initiative role? Yeah, your initiative. Yeah, so is initiative. The acrobatics or the awareness is that's what you were doing at the time the combat started. Um. Because there's not an actual like a like in D and D you have an initiative uh, square. We don't mm -hmm. have that. It's based on whatever you were doing when combat initiated. That's that's what you're initiating Sleeping. based off of. That's <laughs> okay. Doing. Okay. So guy, we can role play that. Gaiden for the first turn is asleep in his perch. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that works. Up there resting, and then yep. uh, all hell breaks loose. You wake up. He hears the shout of the goblin captain getting the arrow in his shoulder. Yep. That, that's <laughs> what. You get awoken to that, so give me an awareness check. What? What? Yeah, so roll in awareness. Should just be d20 plus your prime stat. Yeah, that's still so bad. <laughs> It's okay, that just means you're going at, towards the end of the round. Said plus prime. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, eight. Alright. Well, uh, as you're asleep and you hear the, the goblin kind of, like, yell out in pain, you hear Biddlesby kind of, like, giving commands in the tunnels, you roll over and you're like, oh, oh. We are in combat, oh no. <laughs> we have already started! I put my shirt back on. <laughs> you you spend a round getting everything ready. Um, Alright. Um, you, as, as you're getting the stuff ready, you watch as the uh, goblin commander uh, hmm. you know, waves his hand forward and you just see a stream of goblins pour forth into various goblin holes and uh, a whole mass amount of them charging towards like the gate and the walls as well hmm. so like they're kind of splitting their forces up in like a 50-50 a move they are? okay and how far away is the goblin commander from me? um I would say he's probably like um like, if you were to just go straight to him, probably, like, what would that be? Oh, mathematics. Um, probably close to, like, 240-ish feet. Um, but if you're just, like, trying to fly above him and get to the same, like, uh, essentially the same square that he's at, but above him, be looking yeah. at, like... As the crane arm flies. Yeah, uh, like... 120, maybe? 120. Okay. Yeah, let me uh, swoop over that direction. And I'll start get started on flying that over there. Um, yep. How many action points are you going to use to fly over there? I get two per turn. You get four action points. Um, cool. <clears throat> Three, get me over there. Uh, Thirty feet of movement, I believe, is, is basically the standard. You, uh, you have a move That'd speed. Be four. Okay. Let me let me see. Let's 
see what the move speed is. Movement rules! Time to look it up. We're using theater of the mind and we're figuring stuff out. Yeah. Uh, no. No. No, no. Ah, hey, there we go. Alright. Uh, move your speed of spaces. Okay, that's, that's great. Okay, well, if it's spaces, I was using basic D&D formula. Ah, uh, so. right, 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 right. Uh, right. So he's got, the the standard is five, but he might have a trait that gets it down to four since he's small. Okay. All right, so he's 24 spaces of movement away from you. Uh, what is your movement speed? <clears throat> It'd be right beneath the death threshold section is... on your... Uh, Five. Five. Crazy okay, so, one. Alright, so you would need to use all of them, and you'll be almost to where he's at. Okay. I like it. Alright, so you start mm -hmm. zooming through the uh, through the cave. I will hold above pattern in full cell. Yeah, once I get there, I'll be stealthy. Okay. Well, I mean, nobody's really paying attention to you up up in the air. Uh, you're you're kind of like darting around at the very yeah. top of the cave, and you can tell the goblins are more interested in the fact that there is an enemy in front of them, and there is an enemy that jumped in a hole, and we are about to go smash some enemies. Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so let me see real quick. Okay. Alright, so seven war tusks join Midwest. Oh my. Alright, Midwest. Uh, they all have a uh, plus one temp HP yep. around me. Uh, so you kind of like essentially set up like a, uh, a shield wall. Uh, ready to engage the goblins that are going to come into the tunnel, and as you, you know, you get the war tusks set, you you join them in the line. Um, one one grimclaw comes in, and then five more come in, and then it's like a tide of grimclaws coming into the hole. As in front of you, there are now currently teen grimclaws. 18 grim claws. Yes, as they are. But you can feel the ground vibrating from them charging forward. Mm. And the tunnel's big enough to, like, accommodate you guys. And there's no, like, getting around you guys unless a bunch of the war tusks drop. But, like, you can definitely tell, like, there's going to be a push of, of bodies. Yeah. Like Leonidas at the hop gates. Yes. And that's that's what this is designed to be. I want them to think that this is like all we have in the tunnels and then we like lead them to a bunch of traps and get them killed. <laughs> yep. You also hear the pounding of footsteps like going further towards like the gate and walls. Uh, uh... And you can already hear the clash of, of combat in throughout the tunnel as other tunnels have been breached as well. Mm. I... Do any of them look like they're going to swing for my wall this turn? Or did they all just use their moves getting here? Um, a couple of them look like they're going to swing on, guys, on your guys. Alright. Um, who looks like the stronger of the two? Uh, let's see. I will say... I, I will say that I'm using the uh, combat tactics as a free action. Okay. Um, I would say, like, there's there's probably about four of the goblins that are going to be able to attack insight. this one. And 
There's like the two of them are a little bit bigger, like bulkier than the others. Um, so those would be the the more okay. powerful ones. Uh, the one one of the more powerful ones that's taking the swing at my guys. I'm going to use my uh, reinforce ability from my commanding aura and uh, when a creature in my aura is targeted by an attack I impose disadvantage on the attack as a reaction okay. so that'll be my final action point as he like goes to swing for uh, my war tusk uh, that I have in the wall I like <laughs> I like whip my chain in front of his face not to like hit him but like completely block out his like targeting so he, he has disadvantage Let yeah as, as crack. you you crack out your chain um you he like follows the chain back over to you and like whips his head around and is just distracted nice. by the fact that you you flung something in front of his face as he rolled a natural one <laughs> yes well, so oh, he just had to, oh, oh my gosh! Please tell me he get trampled by his soldiers. By, by oh, the there's definitely of... a press of, of bodies against. Like they're pushing a, him against the enemies, so you know, or <laughs> against the guys. <laughs> against the shields. Yes. <laughs> Smashing them in there. That's fun. Oh yeah, the press of bodies is thick. Uh, I. <laughs> I turn to a slink skulk and I say, uh, prepare the next fallback zone. He, you look back to tell him that he is gone. Nice. <laughs> like, like whenever you were like, shoot him and get back down. He's like, okay. Boomp. And the moment he went back down, he, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get paid enough for this. Uh, one of your one of your war tusks um, gets yoinked, for lack of a better term, as he is shield is grabbed by the other big guy and is flung into the crowd of grim claws. Yeah, he was prepared to he was prepared to take the push. He was not prepared for the pull. Oh no. <laughs> so it was more of a yoink right off his feet. Uh, unhappy sounds intensify. <laughs> oh, of course. Um Let's see, that is the end of their turn. Let me see how... Just a general look of how things are going in the others. Okay. Things are going okay in the other ones. Uh, so you, you begin to fall... You, be, you begin to pull your guys back. Um, so uh, it is top of the initiative, which would be you. Well, so did, uh, did Arg get his turn? Arg's waiting. Arg is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Arg's waiting at the end of the uh, tunnels. Ah. Right? No, there there are a couple <laughs> of side rooms, more like around in the middle. Yeah. They're they're supposed to, they, they were basically used as dirt emptying points midway through building the tunnels, right? Right. So it's not like at the end, but okay. it's a fair way in. Okay. But, yeah. Okay. So. Like a midway point, Arg is going to bust yeah. out and tear up some stuff. Mm, wonderful. Uh, yeah, then uh, top of the initiative. Yep. I would like to use my uh, I can use my commander's call. 
Uh, so I'm going to use one action point and the stamina point that I regained from using the help thing uh, to command the one who got yoinked into the into the fray. Uh, I say, get out of there, soldier! using the move command and the creature moves up to their speed without provoking opportunity attacks. Oh, okay. That is a, uh, that is powerful. All right. So I was, I was getting ready to see if he got ripped apart or not. Um, so yeah, you yell at him as he flies into a group of them that used all of their action to get into the hole. Um, because they don't have any action points to use. They, weren't able to finish him off he gets up and books it through the line back over to you guys we we failing up uh after he like closes in and like a fresh one comes up to take his place and we pull back (laughs) all right yeah he looks absolutely terrified (laughs) he saw his goblin life flash before his eyes you're not dying today, soldier. <laughs> like he just landed in a field of grogs, yeah. and he oh, was no. a—he <laughs> was a little gnome bard. No, <laughs> things were not looking pretty. Oh no! <laughs> uh, you you save him, uh, and you guys start pulling back. Um, All right. Uh, I would like to keep the rest of my action points to do reactive stuff. Okay. So, let's see. We will say you move. You move a good portion of the way back. Um, what's your movement speed? Uh, I think it's five. Okay. Space, because, like, that's the size of my aura. Okay. In that case, you, yeah, using using the simple thing, five foot, one square, yeah. makes, yeah. So five foot is, or five movement spaces, 25 feet. Yep. You guys move 25 feet backwards, uh, avoiding some of the, uh, the initial traps and such. Mm-hmm. Um... And then, uh, I would like to, whenever one of the war tusks in the phalanx makes like a spear attack near mm-hmm. me, I would like to use bolster using a action point. I take the help action to aid that target in the attack, uh, and it's able to happen as a reaction. Okay, so uh, you're going to use the help on one of the guys who are using their spears? Yeah, so he gets advantage. Okay. So, let's see. Yeah, you watch as, like, as you guys start going back, those four that came up to start swinging, and mostly the one that grabbed and threw the one guy, you see, like, almost everybody who can spear that guy, like lunge the spear into him (laughs) nice um i then because i used the help regain my stamina point okay and then can use my command i'm loving this build (laughs) it's great for the it's great for this specific moment (laughs) i am loving this build um I uh, regain my stamina point with Commander Stamina. I then use my third action point and the stamina point I just regained to use Commander's Call again. This time, not for the move, because I already did that this turn. Uh, I'm going to tell uh, the goblin who made it back over our lines to get, like, to keep moving, right? 
And right. uh, when, because I'm saying like, you know, get out of here stuff, uh, I'm telling him to do the dodge action, which makes him do the full dodge. It's not like a half dodge. It's a full right. dodge. Um, okay. And then I will reinforce one of the guys who gets attacked. And okay. That'll be my fourth action point whenever it happens. Okay. Well, then, uh, you watch as the, the big one that uh, threw the little guy. Uh, it gets speared enough, he drops. Uh, one of the other smaller ones also drops. Um, just by the number of spears being, like, thrust in and out repeatedly. Uh, yeah. You, you guys are slowly, you know, doing the, doing the Roman thing. Um, let's see. So... You guys start pulling back. Um, let's see, Arg is not triggered yet. So then they will go real quick, and then it will be Gaiden's turn. As. Uh, what does the bolster do again? Uh, it gives disadvantage give to disadvantage. one of the attacks coming in on. On our guys. Okay. Um. Um. Okay. Well, I will say that. Uh... Sure, I got the uh... weapons down. Correct. Um, you watch as, uh, like, two of your war tusks are pummeled into paste relatively quickly. Um, just the, the overwhelming strength that they possess is the shield get, you watch as, like, two of their shields just buckle, and the moment the shield buckles, it is just paste afterward. And that that's like I already saved one of them and then they get Yeah, that was one of them The third one is the one that got saved oh, as no. again sixteen but not all sixteen can attack, so you know. Yeah. They they begin to um bash in. It's kinda like if you envisioned what would happen if you gave Arg like a war hammer. Made for Arg. Uh. <laughs> but you just have, like, you know, three goblins bashing a smaller goblin. This isn't uh, yeah, you you realize really quickly, like, oh, yeah, you're, you're going to need numbers to keep reinforcing as you're falling back. But it will work. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Gaiden, you are four, you are 20 foot away from being above the commander, um, as he is, like, waving his guys forward, hmm. and he's, he's not so much giving orders as much as he's, like, hooting and hollering, and, like, moving his arms. <laughs> Hopping up and down in place. <laughs> yeah, he's he's very much like uh, C like Caesar from Planet of the Apes, but <laughs> slightly more monkey. <laughs> there it is. Um, so I'm sure he's unaware of my presence. Uh, he has not noticed you. All right. I'm gonna pull out ye old spear. 
Um, we're gonna see if we can play uh, Stick the Commander. I, I just want you to be aware, you're going mm -hmm. to fly into a sea of enemies. I should be able to poke and leave, right? Uh, we certainly hope so. <laughs> I just, I would just want you to be aware, no? you are, you are poking the big guy in a in a sea of big guys. Hmm. As the saying goes, you may certainly try. I just want you to be aware of what you're getting yourself into. Hmm. Ooh, you certainly I have an even do better the idea. Strike and strike and fade. So actually, I'm going to turn my gaze upwards. Okay. And what do I see upon the ceiling? Oh, you see stalactites all over the place. It's just um. Give me a percentile roll, and we will say if you get higher than a 80%, there is a stalactite above the commander. I got a four. Oh, you see stalactites everywhere, but not where you need a stalactite. <laughs> it was like reverse... Reverse, can't, reverse points. Yeah, if it would have been lower than a twenty, you would have right. nailed it. <laughs> um, but you do see you do see stalactites, and you see like the sea of enemies moving forward. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can um, start like rigging them to fall, like with a with one like crack or something like that. Okay, with like like a rope like, wrapped around them. Yes. You're like, um, are you trying to destabilize them with the slings so they drop, or are you trying to like spear them so that they drop? Yeah, like score them, so I can like knock them down in rapid succession. Okay. So you're prepping them all. You're prepping yeah. some. Okay. Um. Are you dropping any this turn, or are you just prepping them? Uh, just prepping them for now. Okay. Um, let's see. But I will say that there are and there are four around you that you can get to reasonably easily to to do scoring them. All right. Excellent. All right, and all right. We will go top of the initiative order again. Midwest Riddlesby. Uh, are my numbers replenished? Um, you, you begin to see uh, other war tusks move forward to take the spots. Uh, um, I uh, command us all, since I've helped, uh, to move back. All right. Um, The, the one who work, looks the weakest, I'm making that one not have opportunity attacks. Okay. Um, so it's like the other war tusks are rushing to meet us. We're like backing up to meet them. Um, yeah, you have a, yeah, essentially you have another reserve unit behind you guys. Um, but again, okay. because the tight passageway, they can't really like... You guys are basically they have to pull back as you're pulling back otherwise they'll you guys will just start bumping into each other mm. but they can reinforce numbers that are lost yeah um approximately how far are we from are um if you given Oh, go ahead. I mean, they've already moved back, what, like 60 feet already? Uh, they would have moved back, well, no, they moved back 25 feet the first, uh, the last round they moved back 25 feet. Um, but just, and, given the pro, 
logical progression of the tunnels, I'd say like 15 would be what I would be expecting. I'd probably say like, I mean, like this round they should get to like whatever um, they back up, they should be basically right where you and the lady troll are. If you guys are in the same tunnel system, if she's in a different tunnel system, then you know that'll be. A we're in the same thing. tunnel system, but we're in separate pockets. Um, okay. Like not quite exactly directly across from each other, but pretty much. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'd say Biddlesby should like break your line of sight, like relatively, like at the end of his turn, it should break the line of sight. Is that right? And then you know the the enemy goblins will crash into them again, and you will see enemy goblins. Perfect. All right, so so we move approximately to the first kill box, right? Uh, essentially, yeah. Like, there's some traps and stuff that you guys are uh, essentially crossing the threshold for, which are slightly before where Arg is, so some of the goblins will hit the traps and then get into you guys, and then Arg will also be there. All right. I'm going to use uh, one of my action points to uh, make a chain attack against uh, the second of the larger variety. Okay. I'm trying to wrap around his uh, uh, helm and like twist it around so the back of his helm is in, uh, in front so he's blind. Okay. Uh, make make that attack roll. Alright. I only got a 12. Um, yeah, that... Unfortunately, you, you smack his helmet, which causes a little bit of dazing, but not... Not in the way that you're trying to do it. Dinner bell. Yep. Yep. Well, um, I just <laughs> bless you. How unfortunate. Uh, uh, that's my second action point. Um, I will... I will use an action point to say that that attack exposed that individual, and the next attack has advantage. Okay. Um, I will then take the uh, help action using bolster uh, to regain my stamina point as well as uh, give another individual uh, advantage. So two individuals have advantage on the next round. I'm saying the trap users. Okay. And then that's my action point. All right. All right. So you you are okay. Okay. Let me oops, make sure I got that. All right. So that is that's the end of your turn, correct? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. They will do. Wait, now we will. Oh, 
Oh my gosh. That is nasty. Okay. Um, so. Um, three more of your guys fall as five of theirs drop to the spears. Mm. Uh, like the exchange is absolutely just brutally terrifying. And then trap time. Nope. I want them to be passed and flank and attack. Okay. So I'm going to hold another action. Uh, basic idea is they're being pressed down a, a primary tunnel, right? There are other lesser tunnels with lesser skirmishes, but this is the main, the biggest one, right? Yeah. And then off to the left and off to the right, there are access chutes into the tunnel. Big, uh, like drive a vehicle in kind of things with the, with the flip up flat trap door that leads above ground kind of an idea. Looks like easy access. Yeah. Right? They're not quite exactly opposite each other. They're kind of staggered. I'm in the one closer to the enemy side. Female okay. troll on the other side. And then when they get past, flank and smash. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let me see how many goblins pour in for support. It's... All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Midwest Dungeon Delvers, the fair before the foul. Part two of episode five. So sorry about that. Power died at my place of residence and I'm the one streaming this. So sorry. Uh, all right, back where we were. Yes, uh, just a quick little uh disclaimer we have been losing power today frequent like off and on uh, hopefully it's done but uh just in case <laughs> uh but uh yes so Gaiden, as uh you were figuring out what you were going to do with those stalactites or what you were doing up there okay <laughs> So, I'm going to get my sling ready, <clears throat> and then I'm going to have my other hand on the trigger for the, the stalactites, and I'm going to sp spool up a slingshot and then slam it down as hard as I can, right next to his, or like, like into his helmet maybe, like even hit him to see if I can get him to stumble a little bit, and then I'm going to drop the stalactites. Okay, make an attack roll. They're not hard to hit because they are not uh, well armored. They are just big brutes. <laughs> Almost had to clutch my pearls. Oh no. <laughs> he gads. Alright, so I am going to. Um, 19 on the dice, so I'm pretty sure I hit, but I can't find the gosh darn. Um, Thanks. Character sheet. Um, do you have your attack spell check in the center? Yeah. So just plus four. Yes. I see. I see. It was. I was seeing the spell check, but not the attack part. My bad. Oh, you're okay. Good. So yeah, twenty-three. Okay. Uh, yeah. You you hit the. Uh, I assume you're aiming for the chieftain. Yeah. Yeah. You hit the chieftain. Okay. And as soon as I as soon as I let the sling fly, I I trigger the stalactites. All right. Uh, the stalact. Oh, actually, um, do me another favor while you're doing that. Uh -huh. Give me a D100 roll. 
Um, and let me know if you get higher than a 90. Get higher than a 90? Yeah. No. Okay, okay. You, you pull the, the, the strings on the... to set the stalactites falling. Um, you watch as... Um, you know, the stalactites are various in size, but like one of the bigger ones absolutely just crushes like a small group, whereas the others, like, they, they fall, do good amounts of damage, um, injuring a lot, if not outright killing some of them. Uh, but you are noticed, and how much damage does your sling do? Um, two slash? No, uh, one blunt. <laughs> Right, one blunt damage. Oh wait, no, you got you got pretty high on yours, so you said twenty three. So yeah. you would have done extra damage, an extra two points of damage. Nice. I forgot that. Yeah. Every time you get five above the the armor class, it uh, does an extra point of damage. Ooh. Okay. Let us see. That is two of your actions. You still have two more. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, since the area around the commander is clear. Um. Well, no, I'm seen now. Yeah, I'm just gonna uh, do another sling at the at the boss guy. All right. Oof. That's not good. Um, I'm gonna luck that. We got luck here, right? No, we do not have luck we here. We don't have luck here. I... <laughs> um. Oh, it just it just misses real bad. Okay. Uh, you sling another sling down at him, and he just now that he sees you, he just grabs the the rock out of the air. Hmm. I assume it was really, really low. Yeah, it was a two. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he, he just kind of snatches it out of the air. That still leaves you with a single action. Um... And how far away is he? Um... I believe we said he, you worked like 20 foot away from where he was with the stalactites. So that would put him at like... X, Y, yeah, but not Z, yeah, I don't think. Uh, 90-ish feet? Okay. And downward from you? Yeah, downward angle. One of the distance to cross in one turn. I mean, if you're trying to get closer, you you certainly can get uh, the five movement, uh, the twenty-five mo uh, feet closer. Nah, or if you want to go twenty-five here. foot down or twenty-five foot forward. Let's just launch another sling. Let's just get another okay. sling. Another sling. 
Nice. Uh, right back the other way, so 22. All right. So then do an extra two points of damage. Or an extra one point of damage, so two points of damage altogether. All right. And that'll be the end of your turn. And then I believe... After Q is... Um, was it Arg went last? Or... No, you went last. So then, top of the initiative order would be... Uh, Biddlesby? Yes. It is time. Um... I would like to uh, move our war tusks back even further, luring the Grim Claws in. Um, do any of my guys look like they're about to buckle if they get hit with an opportunity attack? Um, I mean, it would depend on how vicious the opportunity attacks are, but the last exchange was particularly violent, which left a lot of both sides kind of di like dying, so... Yes. Um, I would like to use Combat Insight as a free action as Combat Leader. Okay. And the Insight... Um, what does the Insight do? I don't remember. <laughs> yes. Let me... I don't remember what Combat Insight does. I see analyze creature or combat insight action. So I'm wondering if it, like, really the information I'm trying to gain. If it came to another exchange like that, do I think this current line could last long enough to lure them into the kill box? Oh. And if you want me to make a roll for that, I I'm just trying to see if it says anything about the... The actual title of it. Yep. Uh, I got Camping or a Combat Leader. Arg, do you... Are you aware of that rule? Or the, or the number that that's on? <laughs> I was prepping my uh, my my next attack. Which what are we looking up? Uh, combat insight. What that does? It's a combat insight. Action. Do do do. I don't remember what. Combat insight. Okay. Uh, forty-three. Combat insight. You can spend one AP to attempt to discern the course of action the creature might take on their next turn. Make an insight check contested by the target's trickery or influence check. Success. You learn the target's emotional state and whether it plans to make an attack, cast a spell, or flee combat during its next turn. Success plus 5. You know who the creature is likely to target with a harmful ability. And success plus 10. You know which ability the creature plans to use. Alright. So an insight roll. Uh-huh. I will... Uh, looking at the particularly uh, large individual who is kind of like forwarding the charge against us here in the tunnels, um, yep. I would like to see his, his stuff. Oh, that's insight. Uh, I rolled a 16 on the die, plus 5, so 21. 21. That gives you a 10 advantage. Ooh. So you success 10. So, um. Uh, Big win. Yep. So you do get the. You do know that they're going to attack. Um, he and. He is going to try and get the group to attack. Primarily you, mm. as they've been whittling down your numbers, and you're kind of in the center. The last <coughs> exchange has, like, not necessarily broken one of the sides, but, like, has left you, uh, in particularly, a vulnerable spot with few 
goblins able to cover you at the moment. All right. Okay. What I will do then, since that's my free action, thank you, uh, combat leader. <laughs> I will use commander's call spending an action point and my one stamina point to uh, command a uh, the the goblin right in front of me I want me and him to move back alright so I'm okay. saying move to him so he moves back without an opportunity attack on him okay um I will then use my second action point to make a uh, expose uh, a attack on uh, their leader with my chain again. Okay. Um, all right. Rolling for that attack. 11 plus 4. That's 15. Does 15 hit? Yes. 15 hits. Um, the next attack on him has advantage. Alright. Um, I then will move back myself uh, along with the goblin that I told to move. I've got two more action points. Um, so are you just falling back to basically the secondary line where you're... Um, so, uh, so essentially I want the goblin who is at the vanguard that I was right behind, I want him to pull back into the position that I was and me to fall back to like a third line start, right? Okay. Well, because, like, you were on the very front, and then you guys have been slowly moving back, and, like, the got the war tusks behind you have been... Oh, I, I didn't the... thought... I didn't think I was on the very front of it, no. I, yeah. I thought I was, like, behind the line of goblins giving commands. I'm so sorry. You, you were in the... You I was in, in the, the thick of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, that... Okay. All right. So, yeah, I make another chain attack. That changes the whole theater of the mind for me. Um, because okay. I was picturing, like, this little goblin phalanx in front of me with spears, but that's okay. You were a part of the goblin phalanx. I was a part of that phalanx. All right, all right. So, um, I look, yeah, I, I want to, essentially then, is I'm, I'm pulling back and then moving a different goblin into my position on the front line. With okay, my, so you're just swapping spots with yeah, one of the... Yeah, I'm, I'm swapping okay. spots with one of the back line. Because um, I, I could tell he's targeting me with that. Yep. So I was like, let me remove that out of the equation see what he's about to do. Um, then I will use the bolster uh... Yeah, I'm going to use my third action point to bolster uh, the guy that I just moved to the front. So whenever he makes his attack, uh, he'll have advantage. Okay. So two different goblins have advantage this turn. Um, whether it's the guy I replaced me with or one of the others attacking main gobbo uh commander down here in the tunnel um i'm gonna save my last action point for a reaction and okay and that'll be my 
my turn for right now. And are you wanting the rest of the war tusks to also fall back towards you, or are yes, you yeah? So, so okay. essentially, I'm asking that we all move back one. Uh, I moved one, the one replacing me, so he wouldn't get an attack of opportunity coming into the zone. Um, right. And then we all like took a step back. Okay. All right. So. So we we should be getting into the the first kill box. Yep. That that is why I was asking. So, uh, Arg, you watch as the line of war tusk goblins move move back. Um. While uh, they, because they go. And then R goes. So let me see how the battle fares on the front line. Actually, we'll do it like this. There is a small part of Biddlesby that's going like, Where is Arg? <laughs> um so the the goblin your goblins on the front um are you watch as they get overwhelmed um it is it is not a pretty sight as uh, the the enemy goblins seem to have rallied around the the leader who was planning on attacking you um with you not being a viable target with you moving back and swapping spots, um, kind of corrals them into a cohesive fighting force, and they they begin to bash through, and you know, I it's not pleasant. I will <laughs> use my reaction then to reinforce and impose disadvantage on uh, at least one of the attacks on the front line. Okay, so then in that case, we will go with um, the, the center holds. Good. <laughs> uh, but the flanks are gone. Yeah, we, we start losing our, our like, wall and they're starting to encase. Gotcha. Yeah, and, and the, the, gobl- the war tusks running forward aren't able to get into position mm. quickly enough. And the, the other ones who have been in there are, you know, they're getting tired and, and running low on uh, morale and stamina and are, you know, because of that, they're breaking, and which causes more holes. And it's just, it is an unpleasant circumstance. Uh, but Arg, you also witnessed it. Uh, the, the carnage happens right in front of you. Um... And the flank that you're on is completely filled with enemies. It is time for enemies to realize that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And that light is a train. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. So, um, I am going to charge out. I'm going to use Heroic Bash. So I smash into one of the targets, and he, I'm going to make a melee attack against him. Right, and I will give you attempt advantage. to hurl him through the air. Okay, and I will give you advantage because you are invisible at the moment, so that makes you, you know, undetectable as you come barreling through. All right, uh, not the greatest, but not terrible. Uh, now let's see here, d20 plus prime. Oh, that's right, I upped that. Uh, so that's going to be an 18 to hit. I'm sorry, yeah, 18 to hit. That hits with a plus 5, uh, you, you hit with 5 extra. Okay, yeah. so uh, I do 3 damage to him. And he needs to make a physical save. All right, let us see. He, he does not. He's 15. He does not. <laughs> he then is pushed back horizontally. Uh, three spaces plus one for every five he failed. 
If it's ten or below, it, below it'll be four, and if it's five or below, that'll be five. Okay, he moves five squares, so that's twenty-five feet. You launch him through his opponents. Now, I'm gonna assume that's gonna have tossing an enemy effect. Uh, yes. I like when you grasp, pull, and toss. All right, hang on a second. Yeah. Uh, uh, so the guy he would hit, the next guy is going to need to make a da, 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 da. athletics check no sorry um i'm gonna need to make an athletics check and that's going to need to make a marshal check all right okay I'm, I'm relatively certain he fails to the marshal check. Yeah, that's going to be um, 15. Uh, yep, he fails. Oh, so, let's see here. Collision. Oh, half of my might. No, wait, sorry, no, wait, sorry. Oh no, that's throwing. I want to. I want to. I want to hit with him, not just throw. Here we go. Air the collision damage. So, what did he roll on that? On his martial check. Yes. He rolled a seven. Seven. So that's not five below, right? Uh, you rolled a, a so, yours was a 15, so that would have been... Uh, oh, yeah, no, it was 5 below. Okay, perfect. Yeah. All right. Plus 1, 4... Oh, wait, sorry. Collision damage. Where is collision damage? Ah, excellent. So how far away was that goblin? Um, well, as you... The one that it hit, right? You ran in, you Did grabbed the first one, and you're you're tossing him. So uh, it would be like less than five foot away from him. Or maybe or five foot away okay. from him. Okay. So let's see now. That means he couldn't travel four spaces, right? Yes. Okay, so each of those two take an additional two points of damage. Okay. The first one took three points. So the first one took five points, and the second one took two points. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to say that it kind of disrupts the uh, the flank that you're on as he just kind of like barrels into the first. Like you launch him into the one right next to him. They go sprawling into the rest of them and kind of, you know, like, are in intertangled with everybody. And then I am going to... Uh, so if I grapple, since I am so big compared to them, can I grapple two with one action point? Or is it one action point per? Um, I would say it's one action point per, mostly because it's you, okay. like, grabbing with, like, one hand, grab with the other hand, and then... Yeah, it actually you're... says that when you grapple, you only use one hand to do it. That's why I was asking. Yeah. So I would I would say that yeah. If you're grabbing one of them and it's then you go fine. grab it's another just... one. Yeah. Alright. So um I grapple one of them. Grab an grab another um, just whatever's okay. at hand. It's gonna be an athletics check. No wait, sorry. I make a... Yeah, okay, I make an athletics, he makes a marshal. Alright, let me... Pull out of that. <laughs> 14, he... 16, that's a dirty 20. And hey, he got a natty, natty 1. Okay, alright, I pick him up, and then I throw him into another enemy. All right. I will make a partial check. Uh, that time he got a 14. Ah, drat. Roll the one. You, you see this 
relatively bigger goblin, you pick up the goblin that you have, you chuck it at him, and he just ducks under the goblin that you've thrown. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that goblin still is going to hit a wall. How far is he going to travel before he hits something? Uh, probably, uh, it's about a 15 foot wide space. Probably going to fly 10 foot before he hits the wall. All right. Let's see here. That's three spaces. Not that one. Not that one. Not that one. Nope. Ah, here we go. Nope, not that one. Uh, nope. Nope. Ah! Equal cool. to one half my might. Plus one for every five they failed the contest. And he failed that contest by... He rolled a nat one, right? Rolled a nat so that one. would be ten. That would be ten. So that means I throw him four spaces. He only travels three spaces. So he'll take one point of damage when he hits the wall. All right. And then with my last attack, I am going to um, punch a goblin. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. How far away is that bigger goblin that dodged the goblin I threw? Uh, he's, he was behind the center, so he's like, maybe 10 foot from you. I've only moved like, what, three spaces so far? Uh, I believe you've only moved five feet, because you went from, uh... Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Okay. Back to engagement zone, to... Well, I am going to jump... Then, because I've got uh, three spaces of jump available. <laughs> okay. Uh, just to avoid opportunity attacks. All right. So Crash eat. down next to him. All right. So you bite over the line of of oh, goblins. Yeah. Oh yeah. Why wouldn't I? I am arg. Yep. You you have seen um, a, you have seen a commander and you are you are arg. <laughs> yep. So um, big boy is going to get a tusk attack. All right. Oh, that's a nineteen on the die. So that's twenty four to hit. Okay. Yep. You get a you're a ten over. Technically, you're eleven over. Fantastic. He is going to make, need to make a physical save DC 15. Um, he is, uh, he is not going to make that save. Um, in fact, he is going to be, like, allergic to your venom. He's impaired. He, he is, he is down. Oh, is he, is he dead already? That was no, only not dead. Uh, not dead. five Just... points. You you gore him and like as you gore him the the um I can't remember what the what the poison you have is it's um it make makes you feel okay it takes away the pain and everything yeah and, it's um anesthetic anesthetic that, that's the word that's the word uh yeah he is super sensitive to the anesthetic of your venom and just. The impairment is he is on the ground, just perfect. Perfect. So he's heavily impaired. Disadvantage on physical checks and saves. And since he's on the ground, and Arg is the sort of person to hit somebody while he's down, I'm going to spend a key point to make a flurry of blows attack. All right. <laughs> I assume I have advantage on this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Prone and really try hard to get better than that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's going to be a uh, 19. Okay. No, wait, sorry. Yeah, 19. Okay. Uh, so that's 10 over? Uh, nope, that is 5 over. 
Oh, okay. And he, he takes, takes another full 22 damage. damage. He's taking a total of 9 points of damage this turn. Yep, you watch as the, the goblin physique um, yeah, is turned into paste under your uh, gorilla smash. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Arg is finishes her turn. All right. Biddlesby, you watch Arg come out like a wrecking ball, smash into the flank that got, you know, one of the flanks that got crushed, and proceed to just have a field day with a field of goblins. And then you watch him disappear behind enemy lines, and you just see his fists raise and fall. And uh, then the female troll also emerges. Uh oh. And proceeds to also. Let me actually let me let me verify. Dice roll. Uh, yeah. Uh, she 20 seconds to... ad break. Okay. Uh, yeah, she proceeds to also rip into the other flank that was also pushed. Um, and then it is to guide him. Meanwhile, out of the tunnels. Yes. All right. Oh, actually, Gaiden, hmm. because I forgot that your your combat is slightly different than their combat being in the tunnels. Uh, we'll do it like that. Uh, what is... Uh, what is your armor class or physical resistance? I can't remember what they call it. Yeah, your physical defense. What's your physical uh, defense? 12. Okay. Um, you see a lot of, like, stones, spears, things fly up in your general direction. Um, none of them make it to you. Okay. But you do know that, like, you, you notice, like, they're throwing things up at you. That's, that's great. <laughs> Just what I needed. They can see me. They can see you as you, and they're, I mean, you're, you're really high up in the air. Right. So they're trying. <laughs> but you also see, like, the spears and the rocks go up and come down mm. in their own ranks. So, like... Not the worst thing. Oh, so it, it's also damaging their own crop. Yes. Interesting. Friendly fire is active. Yes. So I'm going to get five feet closer, like one square closer to them to like and like tease them and do like a, a Captain Ginyu uh, turn and fanny pat. As uh, as they say, blah, 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 blah. and I'm gonna wind up a slingshot and get my good old whack at the commander. All right, make your whack at the commander. Yep. Uh, it's a mess. All right. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna swing another one at him. Okay. Uh, fifteen. That is a hit. Nice. That's one more point. Looks like. And that leaves two action points now, or. Yep, you should have two action points now. Okay. Uh, 
I don't really have any extra stuff right now. Um, I guess uh, I'm gonna give him two more slingshots at the at the commander. Okay. Well, what was your class again? Huh? What is your class again? I forgot. Um, I'm pretty sure he's just a fighter. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. I wasn't sure if there was any specialty things that fighters get. Action surge. Yeah. So that's a, a 20 to strike and a 21 to strike. Oh, those, those definitely hit. Okay. I think. Nice. Oh, yeah, flank, flank. And I'm gonna use my uh, last couple minute movements to swoop in and out. All right. So I'll you try start to draw some more player. Yeah. All right. Make a um, make an influence check. Okay. Why? I only I'm only getting like two threes or fours or nineteens, eighteens, seventeens. Like what the heck? There's numbers in between, dice. <laughs> right. Um. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure that comes out to be. A seven. All right. Um, their response. Yeah, they are. They they see you, um, and while your your antics are good at being annoying to them, they're they're not provoked at, into more of a frenzy. Oh. Punks. <laughs> I mean, they're already frenzied up quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're going in quite the rig. I'm rolling, that's for sure. As any barbarian will tell you, it's never a bad thing to have more frenzies. <laughs> Speaking of frenzy, I had uh, my turn. Okay. <clears throat> So it is the top of the initiative order. Biddlesby. Seeing our trolls rush in and ev essentially eviscerate their flanks, right? Yeah. Uh, well, Arg didn't really eviscerate the flank. Arg kind of dove to the last known location that you saw the, uh, command. the enemy. Yeah, yeah. The, the big enemy leader of the, the trench fight. I, uh, I shout out, uh, All right, everyone! To battle! And I'm gonna use rally and, uh, amass as many of the war tusks, the, uh, blood fangs, the, uh, dark fangs, and the uh, stone guts to like rush the rush them and then uh, as they're all gathered around I'm giving them all one extra health point okay you guys charge forward you, you're you moving forward with um, a, a, about a platoon's worth a small platoon's worth of uh, various goblins I, uh, seeing them around me, I feel bolstered too, and I just, like, do this crazy run, jump over the line, and I stand kind of, like, with my back to Arg's back, and I start cutting up <laughs> the goblins with my greatsword. 
All right. Uh, I'm gonna need you. However, while you while you leap over, I'm gonna need you to make an acrobatics check. Ooh. Why did it have to be acrobatics? <laughs> because you are landing in a puddle. Ooh. Um, and by a puddle, it is the viscera of the goblin leader down um, here. <laughs> I got a seven. <laughs> All right. Uh, you run. You jump. You land. You slide. And kind of smack into the back of Arg, like face first. <clears throat> uh, as you see the remains of Sorry there, big guy. <laughs> yeah, you see the remains of the goblin uh, and Arg covered in gore. Uh, Arg does not notice you impacting him in the least. <laughs> <clears throat> and then I'm gonna make uh, two great sword attacks. Alright. The first one is Eleven to hit. That does not. I miss because I'm still trying to find my footing. Yes. Just barely. Twenty-two like, to hit on the next one, though. That that do hit. That hit with a plus that gives you a a nine over. So not quite the ten to get the extra two points, but you get one point. Nice. Of extra damage. All right. So he'll take four points of slashing from my. Gladius Greatsword. Alright. Um, I am then going to because uh, I have my stamina point back from rallying or bolstering the yep. last one. Uh, I'm going to uh, do Commander's Call. <laughs> And okay. give Arg the command, and I point at the next biggest one, and I say, SMASH! <laughs> Giving him an Arg attack right now with advantage. <laughs> okay. Uh, the nearest one he could attack would be, like, similar to the, the line that you're attacking, where you're behind them. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Y you point to one of them. Okie dokie. Mm -hmm. Argue your Middlesby, and you are told to attack something. Fifteen. Fifteen? That hits. Alright, he takes three points of damage. Alright, uh, I'm going to assume it's the same one that uh, Biddlesby hit, and you just kind of like reach out, grab, and crush the, uh, the skull of the goblin. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Billsby sees that and just like a small bit of horror at the realization of what he's like doing. Yeah, like you're 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 standing in essentially the legs and arms of a goblin that got double, you know, the the gorilla smash to the rest of the body. And only the arms and legs were left. <laughs> Dang. And then he just turns around and grabs the goblin. Grabs the goblin. You slashed. You slashed him deep, and just crush. <laughs> All right. I. Arg is I, I not am, playing around. <laughs> I end my turn. Yep. All right. They are going to go, but. Um, the goblins that are at the entrance from where the enemies were pouring in and where you jumped in, Biddlesby, they uh, were about to surge forward, see Arg just rush and smash and begin to scramble out of the hole. I love that. I love that reaction. Yeah, Good. two trolls just burst out of the walls, and it's time to go. 
<laughs> we came to the wrong neighborhood. This is not the hole for us. <laughs> we are sorry. We will get in our car and go. Yeah, as their morale was a dismal four. Oh, I love that. So they are they are routing on that I, side. I can improve on that. <laughs> I can make their morale better. <laughs> well, for us, but you know. <laughs> um, let me see. So with the front, okay. So the left side almost entirely taken care of by the female troll. The right side is taken care of by a large portion of the platoon following you up which leaves the left to flank the center and center is being absolutely crushed by your forces at the moment so uh yeah you uh the the force in your hole is it, it has been eliminated as right flank you know, basically marches on the goblins that are sprawled out left flank cuts through with the female um, troll and just closes in around and finishes off the center um, however Gaiden is going to Let's see, the, the Chieftain is going to attempt to attack Gaiden with Rock. Gaiden, you take two points, or no, three points of damage. All right. As a fairly decent sized rock, not as big as an Arb rock, but a decent rock comes flying up at you from the, the Goblin Chieftain. <laughs> I look Meanwhile, at him the rest... like, not the face. <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of hurts. But then you see, like, the rest of the goblins attempt to also launch rocks. And some of them closer, but most of them just, you know, 50 feet in the air and start to fall down. Smash friends. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of, like, ow. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, uh, you from your vantage point, you're also seeing like a bunch of the uh, the uh, was it blood fangs, I believe. Are they the uh, yeah the blood fangs uh, up in your perch area? Because you know, there were several uh, perches put up on the ceiling, like throwing spears and like shooting goblin bows down into the crowd okay. of you know, good, good goblins rushing should. the wall. Um, you see at this point some of the goblins have like hit the wall and are like scaling up the wall and it's mostly the stone guts that are holding the walls along with the, the gate area that was you know, not there's not an actual gate there it's just a it is a gate area with no gate and uh yeah, they, they seem to be holding fairly decently well because their phalanx is yeah solid solid phalanx and the spears are good enough to you know poke the grim claws off the wall uh, but you do know that it's only a matter of time yes uh, um so the commander that I was launching rocks at has been eviscerated? No, no, no. The commander that you've been launching rocks at is still up and walking. The Essentially, one of the lieutenants went into the tunnel to, you know, went into one of the goblin holes to make a, yeah, make his way through, come up the back end. Um, one of those lieutenants is, is dead. Okay. Commander, very much still alive and was able to lob a rock at you. Yes, he sure was with me. The rest of his rocks <laughs> didn't quite make it to you, but that first one, that first one was whipped at you. Okay. 
but it okay. is your turn. Um. Now. Do I see that they're, uh, the front of their wave is starting to route? Uh, it, the, the Grim Claws are not routing. Um, it's just, you, you can tell that, like, just based on the, the press of the Grim Claws, the Stone Guts can hold for a little bit, but eventually they will get overwhelmed. Okay. Especially on the walls. The walls is where it'll be, it'll be rough. Not really doing too much against this commander. Um, to be fair, he is very distracted and he is still very close to the hole that Biddlesby jumped into. Hmm. So realistically, you made him not move. <laughs> nice, nice. So he's close to the hole that what? That Biddlesby what? Biddlesby jumped into a hole after going out and talking with the uh, commander of the Grimclaws, and uh, that that hole has now been liberated. Oh yeah, that's the hole that the goblins started to come crawling it back out of. Yes. And he's right next to that hole. He he's like within thirty feet of the hole. <clears throat> And, uh, it, yeah, the, the number of other goblins is diminishing quite a bit as they're moving forward to attack the walls and the gate. So, yeah, and maybe another round or two, he'll be, you know, aside from the goblins throwing stuff at you, he'll be mostly by himself. Okay. But I'm going to keep making them mad with more sling. All right, more sling. Uh, 14. That hits. Okay. That does a 1. 17. That also hits. For the 1. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you, you just whip rock after rock after rock into him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there are other numbers, you know. <laughs> These numbers, eighteen would have been nice, but so yeah. that was okay. <laughs> All right. So then uh, you're, I close. Uh. Or are you moving a little bit closer? Yeah, let me move. Uh. Two squares closer to directly above him, I guess. All right. Two feet closer, so two feet closer altogether. All right. I assume that's the. Yes. We're going back to Biddle's. All right. I, uh... <clears throat> I lead the charge out the tunnel. <laughs> All right. Um, so you're you're leading the charge out of the tunnel. Yes. Um, All right. I, I essentially am, like, we lured them into the tunnel... They routed, we're showing them why they routed. <laughs> okay. And right, so you... uh, I would like to like surge out of the tunnel uh, toward and like make a beeline for their their leader. 
I, I just want you to be aware, it will cost you three action points to move all the way to the end of the tunnel, and it'll cost you an action point to climb out of the tunnel. Are you sure you want to make it all the way out of the tunnel? Or do you want to stage at the bottom of, like, at the entrance of the tunnel? Okay. <laughs> then that, I, cha- I, that changes things, yeah. Logistically, it's just that, like, that's how the logistics would work no, out. I get it, I get it. Um, I'm going to use three action points to get to the lip of the tunnel. Okay, so you get to the edge of the tunnel and you, you stage for a minute, rally everybody together, get the unit ready to move. And uh, and, and I would like to uh, shout out of the tunnel, What's wrong, Grimclaws? I thought you were mighty indeed! Alright, make a influence check. Alright. My good sir, that's a 15. Alright, that is... Uh... 7 higher than what I what I rolled? 8 higher than what I rolled. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, you uh, okay? We will we will deal with that here in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, the the rest of the units holding, which then puts it into the enemy's turn. The commander, hearing you yell that out, um. Gaiden, you watch the commander look at the hole and proceed to move towards the hole with the goblins that were throwing stuff at you. Can I use my last three movement as a reaction to uh, move to, like, regain stealth? Uh, yeah, the moment that they turn and are no longer paying attention to you will allow you to do a stealth roll. Perfect. As you are flying, you get advantage. <clears throat> pretty sure that's a 16 all right you you got a 16 on your sneak stealth you are nice. creeping all right so then it is now our you and the lady troll I don't remember what you named her. I, I don't think I wrote that name down. Uh, Megora. Megora. I will write that name down. M I G O R A. Megora. M O R G I A. M I G O R A. Okay, Megora. Got it. About how far is Arg from the entrance to the tunnel? Uh, the exact same distance that uh, Biddlesby was, so it'll take you three action points to get there, and then I have a move to get out. speed of six. Okay, so and so it would take a... Biddlesby seventy-five movement to get there, or seventy-five feet of movement to get there. Mm-hmm. It, Let's so... see, I've got thirty. Yeah, so three should get me all the way out, right? Yeah, three will get you all the way out. Um, and I'm a yeah. Three should get you all the way out. <laughs> Essentially, I thought hand. you were mighty indeed. I raise my hands and then the trolls charge out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh no, yeah, it's, it's, it's 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 you all you did was set them up for the world's best insurance jack in the box. Oh, it's so great. <laughs> yeah, because like they're <laughs> moving toward the hole and getting ready to fight, and then here here comes just Bah! Giant gorilla. Try and murder gorilla. (laughs) So, uh, that would be three movement uh, to get all the way out. Yes. And that would leave me one afterwards. Uh, So, basically speaking, when I reach the entrance to the tunnel, I just Superman leap out of it. And full on punch the commander right in the face. All right. Um, are you wanting the female to follow? Uh, no, she's she's on cleanup duty. Okay. 
Because there are a lot of enemy goblins still in the tunnels. So. All right. So she's she is now she is now going through the tunnels, helping out the other goblins in the tunnels. Oh yeah. No. She she she's she's uh she's making sure we don't get re ambushed. All right. All uh, right. Let's see what we got here. Biddlesby, you watch as Arg charges forward and jumps out, uh, and you can oh, hear like the, yes. of the commander and like the other goblins moving towards the lip of the the, the hole as Arg rushes out and jumps out into the commander's <laughs> face, and then you watch, like you look back and you see the female mm -hmm. troll skulk around one of the corners to like go help the other goblins in the other tunnels. I like that. Yeah, you know the, that thing in cartoons where a guy gets hit by a car and his boot goes flying the other direction? Mm-hmm. A boot's about to go down that tunnel. That is a natural 20. Oh, okay. Okay. 25 to hit. Say hello to your face. That is an extra 2 damage. Dang. Uh, so that's, that's 5 think... damage. Yes, uh, so that is... He is not happy. And, um, right. Yes, I can do that. Oh, uh, let's see here. Actually, let me see. I'm currently in bull stance. Is that right? Am I in bull or cobra? I believe you said cobra last time, but I am not 100% sure. I will allow you to make. The, yeah, the yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in cobra. That's right. I wasn't planning on using shove or throw, so... Alright, so let's see. What's the one I need? I need... Fist? I forgot about this. Fist... Martial Maneuver? Um... So, uh, I don't just hit him. I use Fist... Martial Maneuver. Which is going to do an extra one point of damage. Okay. So it's six total damage. And he needs to make a physical save or be grappled by me. Alright, let me see if he makes that physical save. He... Uh, do you have a DC? Is it 15? Bad break. Um, uh, should be 15, yes. Okay. He does not make that. Yes! So... He is now grappled. And now that I have him grappled, I deal one damage against him, an additional one damage against him because he is grappled, and I use Flurry of Blows to punch him again. All right. And that's not as good, but it's a dirty 18. That hits with a 5 and, over. Actually, that was kind of a, that was kind of a rough... Roll. I'm gonna repull that. Okay, right. I'm actually gonna keep that because the other roll was better. So yeah, we'll just say uh, dirty 18. Okay. Five overs. So that does an additional one damage, and then an additional one damage. So he takes another five points of damage, and he is currently grappled. All right. And that ends my turn. All right. It is the end of your turn. Guidance. Uh, you see, uh, the commander go from paying attention to you to ignoring you. You, you sneak off, you, you sneak flight down, um, and then you watch as he gets close to the, like, close to the hole, uh, and prepares to, like, go into the hole. Arg comes flying out of the hole, um. Uh, Punching and grabbing this the commander and then picking him up and punching him again hmm. But yeah, you you watch Arg just barrel out and smash All right, all right Hmm All right, so once I see the commander Take his eyes off of me. I'm going to switch over to my spear. 
Alright. And with switching over my spear and Arg punching the commander up into the air, does he land prone by chance on his back? He is currently grappled by Arg, as in Arg is just holding him in the air and punching him in face. You know that you know that thing Kinda where like the bully out. grabs him by the collar and holds him up and punches him in the face? Okay. Yeah, that's happening to this goblin right now. Yep. Okay. So I'm gonna so I'm gonna use that opportunity to swoop in from the side of that and just run this goblin through with my spear. Alright. At see, full should... speed. And it should take two of your movement. So two action points for movement. That should leave you two attacks. Okay. Okay, so uh, the 22 to strike and the 20 to strike. The two twenty to two twenties to strike. Or wait, it's with advantage, right? Uh, yes, with advantage. Okay. Yeah. So a sixteen. So a twenty and twenty-two. <clears throat> um. Twenty and twenty-two. So one does an extra one point. I, both of them do an extra one point. Nice. And then when I when I come through for the second hit, can I leave the spear in him? And I'm gonna switch to my sword and buckler. All right. And I'm gonna land next to Arg. They're kind of like in like a V, so he like has to fight us both at the same time. Okay. Stab, stab, and then land with sword. Like an, an obtuse sword and board. V. <laughs> All right. That is, uh, I assume, the end of your turn. Uh, how much yes. damage did you do with your attacks? Just now? Yeah. You Three did total. two spears. Or, wait, 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 no. Or one did ex one extra. So that was three plus three plus one. Three plus three plus... Uh, it'd be three plus three plus two. Right? Okay. Yeah, so... Eight points of damage? Yeah. All right. That goblin is not looking <coughs> great, but he's still up. Biddlesby, you have the uh, you have watched Arg fly out of the cave and have heard commotion. Oh, you mean like at the lip of the cave? I can't like see what's. Going oh yeah, on. no, because the goblin hole is like, yeah, it, it's um, like. Vietnam level of like you know you gotta ah, go into the gotcha, hole. Gotcha, yeah. You are, you are at I the use, edge of the hole. <laughs> I use one of my action points to get out of the hole. <laughs> All right, action point out. You and a platoon of goblins emerge out of the hole. Yeah, I see. I see the commander run through. Yeah, spear still sticking out of the commander uh, as Gaiden is next to Arg. I would like to slowly begin to approach the commander while pointing my platoon over to the gate to go back up the gate. Are you wanting them to, well, are you wanting them to deal with the other goblins that are around you guys aside from just the commander? Because the commander has his essentially honor guard with him. Right, right. Hmm. I'm going to send a small fraction. Like, I'm going to split up my platoon. All right. To, to hit, him in the, hit him in the rear. Yeah. So, okay. uh, I point, like, a squad of uh, five to six goblins, right? All right. Uh, and I'm making sure they're war tusks. And okay. I, I sick the war tusks at the main force at the gate. Um, okay. And then the rest of us turn to the honor guard. Uh, and I begin slowly walking towards them. Uh, okay. Your commander lies 
in the grasp of a troll with his very breath coming in weakened gasps. And you think you will stand against this tide? I think not. I think you will turn and buckle like the rest of your sniveling tribe. You should have taken our deal. It would have been better to live another day. But now you will be hunted like the dogs you are. Make a either influence or intimidation, whichever you're trying to do. Um, I'm going to do influence. Okay. It, essentially, I'm using this action point as I close the distance to give them one last opportunity to join us. To lay down their arms. If that makes sense. Yep. Uh, okay. Nat 20. Uh, all right, you watch as the honor guard, <laughs> like, looks at you, Bro. Look, looks at the troll, looks at the commander of that in the troll hands, and then just kind of like, they look at each other, and, and you can see like the communication of like, eh, it ain't looking good, guys. <laughs> Our commander just got the holy hell beat out of him. Uh, and he ain't looking good. Uh, let me see what the commander himself... I've still got two action points. <laughs> uh, Alright, so the commander... Um, coughing, you know, blood, like blood coming out in his coughs. Looks down, like moves his head slowly over to you. You know, just swollen face, the whole nine. Yeah. <laughs> you proven yourself. <coughs> Grim calls will follow. <laughs> oh, the Grim Claws indeed will follow, but you will not see another dawn. As you say that, the um, Grim Claws around the commander um, begin to club. <laughs> they club the commander? Yes. Oh my gosh! <laughs> like, they were kind of like, uh... And then the commander says it, and you're like, mm, the Grimclaws will, you will not. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. So, like, what was happening in the hole is now <laughs> happening in Arg's hand. Oh no! I I turn and I give a, a big shout. Any Grimclaw who would lay down their arms and join us may live. Uh, you you turn and yell, and uh, one of the Grimclaws that were with the honor guard um, hand you the big horn. Oh yeah. Uh, as, as you blow the horn, the the fighting kind of dies down and, and slowly stops as they turn around and see the commander held up still by Arg, now just mostly not... Um, the bones have been crushed and caved in. It's like a sack of jelly. Oh. <laughs> being held aloft by by Arg. Uh, and the Grimclaws kind of move towards you. He wasn't going to survive the rest of the round, I don't think. <laughs> I, like, I was going to walk up and, like, take him out with my... <laughs> yeah, 
he he was he was not looking pretty. So, but uh, yeah, the uh, the Grim Claws submit. Let me see how many of the Grim Claws are alive. Um, so roughly almost half of the Grimclaws died out, died in the attacks. Um, and specifically in the hole, the female troll does not understand the stop. Oh no. <laughs> The, the the hole becomes a um, carnal house of goblin parts. Uh, like shortly afterwards, <coughs> arg arg whistles. To call, when you whistle, she call doesn't even troll. like come out of the hole. She makes a new hole out. <laughs> she just dig up. Combat um, is done. All good. Yeah. And only about a th about a third of your guys uh, were were lost in the exchange. Okay. Mostly the. And then we were going stone. up against superior numbers. Then. Yeah, and it was mostly the stone guts were were getting um, hammered yeah. on the walls. The war tusks were doing pretty well in the in the hole, uh, especially with you know the uh, blood fangs and whatnot. Uh, so, let me see. Give me one moment. I will see with the other tribe. Dark fangs. We will see if they are what they're able to heal. Oh, oh Arg is definitely going to help out with the healing. Oh, okay. Well, uh, roll a roll a. I don't know what it is. Medicine or healing or I can't remember. Uh, I've got herbalism, alchemy, and medicine. Uh, so. Roll a medicine. All right. Um. Okay. All right. Yep. Okay. Hi. No, wait, sorry. Um, so I roll the die. I add two because I've got the dot. And then I subtract one because my intelligence is negative one. Uh, yeah, your intelligence is minus one, so you'd uh, subtract one from your roll. Okay, yeah, so five total. Okay, five total. Um, you, you help. Puzzly, <laughs> um, it's... Nope, dead. Throw into pile. Nope, dead. Throw into pile. Yeah, you're you're kind of like, oh, this one's dead, and even even if they're not dead, like you kind of like poke them in the chest and um, crush their sternum. It's dead now. <laughs> Hard perform CPR. Squish. Crush. Crush. Uh, it, this this one was non-savable. <laughs> uh. Yeah, you, the, the the dark fangs are able to heal about half of the casualties on both sides. <clears throat> the ones that didn't die or were um, helped to death um, <laughs> are are saved, though they'll take time to to fully recover. the The worst of their injuries will be. Uh, mitigated so they will recover in time the <clears throat> honor guard that handed me the big horn uh -huh. I point to him and I say you you are now the commander of the grim claws he is going to look him like, in the eye uh, and say <laughs> I is going to look him in the eye and say do well the arc's friend you poor Bjarg's food. 
He nods. Okay, I chief now. That's right. <laughs> um, Arg, you notice that the uh, the old Grimclaw commander um, is covered in red runes all over. I'm a cultism checking because that's what I am. Yes. Only you see the red runes. And that is... Uh... 15. Uh, okay, no, wait, yeah. sorry. Um, I would add my intelligence or my prime to a knowledge check. Um, that is a good question. I think you would add your intelligence. Let's see, not that one, not that one. Ah, uh, yes, no, it's skill checks. Okay, so yeah, 15. Okay. Um, you get at that deep part of you that doesn't that doesn't mingle with the troll part of you very well uh, understands that there is a ritual on this goblin skin. It's not the same that you did with the female troll to give her the ability to go invisible, but like on some instinctual level, you kind of understand that there's a almost like a spell that has been worked. Are you just going to pick up the body and tuck it in his belt? Like hanging a pouch from the belt, right? <laughs> You just have this rabbit goblin. Yep. <laughs> Dead rabbit attached to belt. Dang. <laughs> you you just in the belt. A grim fate for a grim claw. <laughs> Argy looks at uh, Biddlesby. Research material. Just taking in that moment that Arg knows what research is. Yes. <laughs> and that he plans to do it. Need to peel and tan hide before rots. You need to make paper. <laughs> I hold a finger up like I'm going to say something. I drop the finger. And I'll walk away. <laughs> nope, nope, don't get paid enough. He's going to... Arg is going to go do some tanning. <laughs> All right. It, do, does Arg have the, uh, the, the trade of uh, leatherworking and or tannery? No, but I have alchemy and nature. Okay. I'm planning on... Uh, see, I don't actually want it to be usable. I want it to be preserved, right? Okay. So I'm planning on alchemically treating the body and then skinning it. All right. Okay. You'll have to give me an alchemy check whenever you're. Uh... Do trades add you... anything? Or are they like a? Do what trades? Yeah. Yeah, like for instance, with you wanting to do this alchemical treatment of the body, I'm going to have you do an alchemy check the moment you either have the ingredients right, right. or an alchemy station. What do you add to it? Let's see here. Um, It'd be your roll I think plus it's just two. a straight roll. If, if yeah, you I got the bubble just... in for your trade. Yeah. Of course it do. I think it's just yeah. a straight roll plus two or, or two, four, six, eight. Uh, no, actually, it does It does use an attribute. Um, each trade has its own attribute. Oh. So for alchemy, I can use intelligence or agility. And okay. then for herbalism, I'm supposed to use intelligence, which is yay. I mean, yes. <laughs> it's not the worst. Okay, we're learning things. New rule. We're, we're touching new things. Mm -hmm. mm, okay, all right. Got it. Right. Perfect. Okay. 
So once I get back to the camp, I'm going to I'm going to start setting this up. I'm going to be gathering resources and I'm going to be working on pickling. <laughs> going to be working on pickling. <laughs> I love everything about that statement. <laughs> All right. Um So you guys have defeated the tribes or recruited the tribes. I would um, like to uh <laughs> Call a meeting of the leaders of each tribe. <laughs> uh, post battle, you know, meeting. Um, the hold on, what was the the name of? Uh, oh, sneak skulk and rugger. Rugger and then Rugger. The uh, Garu was the war tusks. Uh, right. right. We didn't right. get the leader of the Stone Guides. You did not. Did not get get his his give name. Me one, give me one second. <laughs> and of course, the new chieftain of the Grim. Blagwort? Mm. I like that one. Blagwort. Slagwort. Slagwort. And that's the Grimclaw one? Yep. And then the Stone Gut will be. Drekken. 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 Got it. I of course want to want to make sure that all of them are still around. Uh, yeah. Uh, as you're trying to like gather the leaders to uh, have a meeting, uh, like Rugger has blood up to his like bicep from him healing and like the what can be um, saved without using magic is yeah field surgeon mm. you know they're they're saving their magic to to prevent death and just field field fixing the uh the ones that can be field fixed so he is he is elbow deep in goblin <laughs> Sounds like a nice stream of args. <laughs> and, and, and he's just kind of like comes comes into the tent. <sighs> a meeting, okay. Ah, uh, I I don't have much time. Uh, the rest of them show up. Um, Baru is looking a little rough for wear, um, as he was in the other hole. Mm. Understood. But he seems to be doing well. Just, he's a little banged up. He's a little bruised. All right. Great. <laughs> Garu. Upon the ending of this meeting, go with Raga and see to your injuries. Oh, these are just minor flesh wounds. Nothing to concern yourself For with. now. Captain. If they get infected, it would be a problem oh. for us, would it not? Yeah, he shakes his head. I've had worse scraps. Nothing to nothing to worry about. Plus, I have a. Uh, he taps his heart. Like he taps his chest and goes, "I have a robust immune system." Suit yourself. Fear not. Fear not, Biddlesby. Illness will not take me. If uh, you fall ill, I expect the replacement to be already decided. Don't worry, you're stuck with me for a long, long time. All right. Uh, Raga, as you have important work, mostly I just wanted to reconnect and make sure that all of us were still alive. You may go back to it. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, we are still alive, it seems. All right. 
back to the business of healing. Yes. Very good. Drekken. Uh, As I was yes. not in the fray with you and your stone gut game, I uh, do not know the losses on your side or the damage to the gate. Please, inform us. Well, the Dark Fangs are doing their best to patch my boys up, but uh, it was it was hell of a fight. Uh, we lost a lot, but we held the line. That's the that's the big thing. You did your job, and you will be commended and rewarded as long as you uphold your end of the bargain. Of course. Slagwort, as you are new to these endeavors or these meetings, this is a chance for you to introduce yourself and to put yourself on uh, better terms with your fellow compatriots than your former boss. These the other chieftains? That's right. I am chieftain. Of Grimpaws. I'm the big boss. <laughs> we all big bosses here. And this one the biggest boss. And he points to you with his club. Oh my gosh. I love him. I love him already. Slagwort for president. <laughs> And he just kind of like sits, stands there and like nods uh, enthusiastically. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just he's a, he's a simple barbarian. I I love it. I love it. And I just I just kind of nod, and then I turn and I look at Slink Skulk. He looks remarkably well. I I I, I figured. <laughs> like surprisingly not really touched by combat at all. Yes. Um, if I remember correctly, Sling Skulk was kind of with me, and then ran away. <laughs> he got you extra help. That's right. He That's... didn't run away, he tactically fell back to reinforce your position. <laughs> Slink Skulk. Without yes, you and the Bloodfane tribe's tunnels, this situation could have been quite worse. We thank you and your tribe. He, he bows, goes, all in a well, couple weeks' work, but, uh, you know, we do our best with what we've got. The female troll... That was, uh, well, she helped clear out those tunnels quite nicely. Yes, yes. They do make the physical labor a lot quicker, don't they? I'm, I meant more of a ripping and, and smashing and, and ripping her way through the goblins. I mean, yeah. The, the other goblins. That too. Ooh. I was a bit nervous for a minute. Hey, is that a... Is that a little piece of dust on your... Here, let me get that. I just kind of straighten him up a little bit more. Can't have the best looking one of us. <laughs> you knock a little dust off his shoulders, he's like... You are absolutely right. I am the best looking here. Can't have that now, can we? Just thank you. You just you don't have to worry. I was doing uh, the logistic work of making sure we were having enough um, people where they were needed. Of course. You were valiant in the front, though. Mm. Why, thank you, Slink Skulk. Anytime, boss. Anytime. Say, Slink Skulk, who's your second in command? 
But that's the thing, boss. Uh, we don't have a second in command because, um, as the best boss, and we don't we don't deal with uh, second best. As the best boss, you don't deal with second best. Yeah, you know, uh, it's kind of like taking out rivals and potential threats before they get there and leaving a string of um, oh. mostly incompetent and inept individuals who follow the rule. Understood. And I just goes, give him another pat, pat, after dusting off his shoulder. And then... Look, the bully boys do their job very well. Uh, in fact, you know, working on those, uh, those little purchase for Gaiden we were able to rain down all kinds of damage and all kinds of death onto the enemies <sighs> my boys did good boys did good and because I know how important it is to make sure that uh, funds get moved accordingly we were able to secure some of the loot Oh, do tell. And he, uh, he goes, well, let me, let me get the boys to bring in, uh, your share. Your, your, you get the lion's share as, as the commander of this esteemed outfit. And he just kind of, like, slowly, like, side stuffles away to the door and, like, psst. And, like, waves people over. <laughs> and you see, like, two scrawny goblins, like, carrying a... It's a small chest. Like, yeah. You know, for for Biddlesby, it's, like, not even um, center of the pecs. Oh, wow. Like, it's smaller than that. It's, like, a, it's almost like one of those little jewelry boxes. So, in, say, Legend of Zelda... It wouldn't be a chest that has the big opening cinematic. It'd be the one where he just kicks it open. Yes. And, and uh, you know, it's got maybe 25 pieces of gold in it. Here he goes. See, boss? Let's... That is the, the lion's share of what we were able to scrounge together. And, I'm and gonna fine. make an insight check as soon as he says lion share. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to insight that so bad. Nat 20. Uh, he is telling the truth. <laughs> um, you can... You can see he is with, with you, like dusting his shoulders off. Yep. Making the comment about he these things have not gone um, unnoticed. Yes. <laughs> and because they have not gone unnoticed, he goes. Uh, you get the sense this is more of a bribe than um, <laughs> anything. I I get that, and. Uh... <laughs> Mayhaps, uh, in future battles, the Blood Fangs will secure more funds. He... For us battles, all. you say? Uh, it is not, um... Not unheard of that we could potentially get more funds for, for, for everyone. Um, but future battles, you say? What? Did you think it was over? I do. <laughs> oh. You made a deal. You're part of the Legion now. Yes, 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 but I mean... There's, there's no more tribes coming. There's no more battles, right? Oh... Oh, my dear, sweet Slinkskulk. 
And I just pat pat. <laughs> You'd be lucky to see your home cave ever again. The realization of what he has uh, signed up for um, slowly begins to dawn on him. Uh, so I'm are you scratching at the door of the tent? Oh, you're scratching at the door of the tent. Mm-hmm. Okay, you you. Uh, you see a massive. It's, it's, it's how you knock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you see a massive shadow behind Sling Skulk. Um, <clears throat> uh, the shadow of Arg. Sling Skulk does not see Arg. <laughs> yes. Oh, esteemed Og. Oh, uh, open oh. the flap. Arg needs uh, alchemical reagents, if possible. Whatever's available. Um... I believe the best one to ask for those would probably be Rugger and the rest of the Dark Fangs. But they may be using those supplies for healing. Arg holds up the corpse of the Goblin leader. Need experiment uh, samples beyond this. Talk to you later if there are good options. Uh, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Nobody realizes that this goblin is mystical except for Arg, so it just looks like he needs strong goblin bodies. Yeah. Yep. Um, as, as you Waves say at that, the leaders. You, you, okay, so you wave at the leaders. Um, the, uh, what, the, what is his name again? Uh, Karu looks at you and smiles and, and kind of like nods. The rest of them just kind of like wave haphazardly and like a little nervously at seeing you. I'm still covered in all of goblin viscera. Art gives him a nice big smile and then heads to find the healer. Um, after that, uh, I look, I look to find a uh, guide. Wherever he may be. All right, you look for Gaiden. Is is Gaiden available? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I I, I look I, I look for Gaiden. What is Gaiden doing after post battle? Um Um, pulling my spear out of the body. I can try to get that back. Yep, you get your spear back. Before okay. Arg takes the body off. Yes, precisely. Um. And then. Pretty well. Um. I'm gonna. <clears throat> so we're at our camp. I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna go check on my workshop. I've, 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 first, I'm gonna talk to uh, the Biddlesby and see what his plans are for the next uh, couple minutes as I go check on the workshop just to, for any damages. So yeah, you, you you know Biddlesby went to go have a meeting with the leaders, make sure everything's squared away and good, so you start walking towards the, the workshop, and you see Arg leave the tip, the commander's tent, um, and I assume Biddlesby at that time, basically, you, you emerge out and you're looking for uh, Gaiden, yes. and you guys would see each other from across the way. I just kind of wave. <laughs> nice. Well... 
What's your big plans, Gaiden? I've got to go check on the workshop and and then get back started on the on the uh, the quartermaster's order. All right. Um. If uh, if it wouldn't be too much trouble. I have a, a special assignment for you later. All right. Yeah, uh, as soon I'll, as you're. I'll uh, meet you at the workshop. By, yeah, I'll see you there. And then I head back into the <laughs> leader's tent. <laughs> All right. All right, so you go back in. And I, I'll say that the the rest of the meeting is just like bookkeeping, numbers, uh, food requirements for the different tribes, like getting all the logistics taken care of. Okay. All right, so you start working on that. Uh, for that, go ahead and give me a. Um... Give me an influence, as you are using your um, you're using your influence to make sure all the things are working. 19, all the bells and whistles. Fourteen okay. on the die plus five. There you go. You got all the bells and whistles moving. You are the logistics are rolling. You 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 have set up a mini uh, you know legion like legion camp. Things are starting to roll the way like a good industrious machine moves. Good. We are making good progress. All right. So, um, you, you fulfilled that. Um, I assume you're wanting to do some glass blowing there, uh, Gaiden? Yes. All right make a gas blast blowing skill check um you will use I, I think it's either agility or let me let me double check glass blowing agility or might uh let's use might <laughs> interesting <clears throat> yeah i'm not exactly sure why it's either or but it is either or well well, so the basic idea is it's supposed to be, you know, it's supposed to be what you're doing with it. So the actual dealing with the glass blowing forge would be might because you have to resist the heat. But that the spinning or working the glass would be agility because you have to actually put in the effort to use it or whatever the other one is. Right. So it's situational. Um, yeah. If you take a look at the trades page, which is. Yeah, I'm looking at the glass. Uh, page 10. Um, no, sorry, that's skills, trades, what have you. You want to start on uh, page 13. Every okay. trade is tied to an attribute. The attribute represents what might be needed to perform this trade, such as the use of one's own strength, might, intricate hand movements, agility, knowledge and understanding, intelligence, or interaction with others, charisma. Uh, blah, 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 blah. A theater might use charisma to capture the hearts of their audience with an emotional performance, agility to perform a fast-paced dance, might to throw a theater partner in the air, or intelligence to remember your lines. Okay. All right. Well, then, um, let's see. And you're wanting to make lenses, right? Yeah, I, I think I've already done the lenses. I, th I think I need to make the hat, the hat part. Okay, okay. Well, wait. Would that be glass blowing, or would that be something else? That could be drooling. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, that's net. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Okay. Original glasses makers were jewelry pieces anyway, so... So that would be an agility attribute. Okay. So, make a roll with using agility. Nice. 19. Okay. Yeah, you you make some pretty good um like a, a good headpiece, like a hat, helmet almost. 
Nice. It even has the ability to like move the move the glasses up and down, almost like a like Splinter Cell, the the thing, but it's just like on a hinge. <laughs> okay. Heck yeah, that's where the jeweler part came in. Yeah, in like you, you do the hinge from like a helmet's like visor. <laughs> nice. Very excellent. Okay, I can work with these. Yeah, so I need to make what did I, what did I say? Twenty of them? Uh, I think you said ten. Was the <laughs> initial? Yes, yeah, that's, that's okay. what I remember. I believe it was ten. Well, how many um, pairs of lenses do I have? Okay, I think it was. You made I think one set of lenses, uh, like your first set of lenses. Oh boy. Um, and they weren't the best. They were not the best lenses. Okay, and that was before the workshop, right? Uh, I believe so, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to have to redo that one. Okay. So I got the one hat. Or the, like the one chassis ready for the lenses to go in. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and make nine more chassis. I, I will let your original roll sit on that one, so you're you're making you're making them in good time. You, you've got a good system down, and enough materials, All especially right. with a lot of dead goblins. You can um, recycle some of their um, no longer being used equipment. <laughs> right. All right. Eventually, Biddlesby comes and says hello. Hey, Gaiden. What are you... Uh... Ooh, perfect timing, actually. Uh, grab that. Oh. oh. Uh. Yeah. Okay, and... Okay, keep keep going. Uh, keep going. Uh, uh, what, was, what were you trying to talk about? Like this? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, okay. Um, I'm sorry, it... It takes a little bit for me to focus on, on things, I, like this, <laughs> and he gets yeah. distracted by the task that he's happened to do for guidance. Okay, uh, all right, let go. Ah, okay, and like that, right? Yeah. All right. Oh man, that one's perfect. Okay. Um. And I set it down on the So, table. hey, uh, while we were in the tunnels. Yes. Uh, and I'd like to make a, a awareness check to see if anyone's listening to us. All right, make an awareness check. Eighteen plus two, so sad twenty. As far as you know, no one is paying attention to you. Um, I look at uh, I I look at Gaiden very seriously after like doing all that, being silly. Double checking to make sure that no one's around. I look at him dead serious. During our battle in the tunnels, a certain individual from the Blood Fangs came out the other end of the battle unscathed, while quote unquote getting reinforcements. I need you to look for the next most capable blood fang, but I need you to do it secretly. Uh, I need to look for the next most capable. What was their clan name again? The blood fangs. Blood fang. The sneaky sneak guys. Right. I okay. uh, don't enjoy 
someone manipulating their way into my good graces. Hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah, man. I'll uh I'll I'll look for the guy for you. Okay. Now again, be subtle. Don't make it obvious. Report back to me whenever you have the replacement. Right, right. So what's this uh, helm hinge thingy? Oh yeah. So um, I grab uh, the one we just finished, and then I hold up the other two lenses, and then uh, and I like I like fit them in and like to show him. Yep. You you make a make yeah you, know, you put the lenses on each side. You you let him look through it. Now, because the the lenses were of poor quality, um, the magnification is there a little bit, um, so you can tell that it's like you can see further away. Uh, but the the quality is very cloudy. Right. Now these are these lenses aren't as good, but you get the idea if you look through it, you can kind of see more or better. Um. I'd like to look through. You, you look through. Uh, you can, like, as you, like, look through, you, like, see a, a group of goblins off in the distance. Um, and, it, it, like, you can see them a lot closer, but you can't make out any of the features. They're all kind of blurry and cloudy. Mm. And that's just from the imperfection of the, the poor right, glass. Right. I tell you what. It's a good concept. It needs a bit of work. And I hand yes. it back. Hand it back? Um, I take the lenses out and throw them in the trash. <laughs> I... Scrap. I turn it and I go, Well, see you at the chow hall. And then I walk out. <laughs> you walk out? Um, Arc. Pickling. Um... Sling Skulk comes up to you as as you're like talking to some of the um, the healers about finding alchemical supplies. Mm-hmm. Goes, ah, Arg, um, you need help with um pickle. I, I you said alchemical reagents and vinegar. Yes. We have a means to to um, well, I have means to help you with the the pickling process. Um, can I ask you a question in in return, a, a favor for a favor, so to speak? Absolutely. I think I might have um, unwittingly upset. Uh, Biddlesby, I don't know how I can remedy this problem. And he, he like, is, is guiding you over to a, uh, the tunnels? Let's see here now. Insight on Biddlesby would be my best way to figure out a good way to do that, right? I'm trying to figure uh, out how smart smart Arg is at this moment. Yes, yes. We will say a, an insight on, on Biddlesby. As oh, okay. There, yeah, that you. works out pretty well. You ran from the battle. We didn't see you helping. So, you want his... favor? Ah. Show him you are brave, and you will support him. Arg bends down and looks him in the eye. What do you know of the Horde? It 
goes. What? Um, there was a lot of goblins with smaller tribes. Nothing, nothing like the tribes we've gathered here. Uh, but more numbers of smaller tribes, so their numbers are larger than we have here. Uh, irrelevant. Uh, but they gather together to to resist and wage war against the Legion and and the the expansion. Um. Middlesby is mad at you because you were not useful in this battle. Show him you will be useful in the next battle. You are not a frontline fighter, he pats him on the back. But you are sneaky, and you can find out information. No, an enemy in a war. Ark, you are the best of big sneaks. It, he he reaches out and like try he tries to touch you. <laughs> he goes, "You are best of friend to help me." Hey, hey, he leads you into like a, a section of the the uh, tunnels underground that didn't really see a whole lot of conflict and sh like shows you a secret room that has. Um, alcohol um, and some other like just alchemical reagents things of just various mm. you know you can tell some of them are poisons and stuff like that and uh, mm. he, he points to like this big um, <laughs> barrel and he goes this is a, a pickling barrel that we've used um, you are free to use pickling barrel Obviously, we oh. can't use it afterward, but it, it is yours for free. No charge, no, no, no problem. Favor for favor, and it is all yours. You One more me. brief thing. Yes. Him a little, not a lot. A little, not a lot. Skim a little, not a lot. Okay. Okay. Alright, finally I can do my pickling. So let's see here. There's various um, poisons and a couple, you know, uh, more rare alchemical ingredients. Yeah, my Arg, Arg is a moderately skilled alchemist, but he doesn't actually use alchemical products. So if he's not working on a product, he doesn't care what ingredients are present. Okay. Um, let's see here. I think if I want to debone and skin him, I'm either going to need to make a nature check or a medicine check, right? I would say a nature check. Okay, all right. As you are you're and... essentially, you know, field dressing a goblin. Okay, that'll be 19. You you remove the skin. If you're trying to remove just the skin, you, you take the skin off. Yeah. Yep, yeah. Yep. No problem. And then I pickle it. And you pickle the skin. The whole point is preserving the symbols on it, right? Yes. So I don't want to use anything too magically lively, but it's got to have a bit of magic in it to keep the runes preserved and glowing. Okay. Uh, what do you do with the remains of the goblin? That you're not using. What do you do with a twig that falls on the ground? I don't care. It's nothing. Oh, okay. I was just making. I was just seeing if you were going to treat this guy like this goblin's um, not important parts as food or not. No, no. Okay. Arg is full. Okay. The next time Slink Skull comes back, he's going to find an expertly skinned goblin lying on the floor. Yes. <laughs> All uh, right. Let's see here. Alchemy, right? Alchemy. Would this be intelligence or uh, agility? Um, I would probably go with agility, because it's mostly just about you, like making sure the whole skin is adequately like submerged okay. in the juice so that it preserves. So eleven and two is thirteen, sixteen. All right, it is in the juices. All 
Oh, Arg is going to nap until it's okay. time to pull it out. All right. It, it'll take a little while for, for the... Uh... It's like 16 costume. hours for most for most pickling, so it's yeah, it's it's gonna be a while. It's gonna take a while. Uh, Biddlesby, you um, see Slink Skull come up. He goes, boss. Biddlesby, I, I apologize. I I am not good. For, I'm not a good fighter. Um, however. Uh, it has come to my attention that while we are done fighting here, we will be fighting again the the, the horde. And he, he holds up he holds his finger. And so I want you to know Link Skulk will uh, secure information. We will infiltrate. We will assassinate if need be. I'm just not good on front line. Uh, Slink Skulk. But, but behind the enemy lines, that is where Slink Skulk thrives. Uh, and so. Uh, Slink boss, Skulk. I, I see you're nervous. J just a little bit, boss. I, Slink Skulk. I feel though I have. Um, and and I, I just kind of like squat down and get eye level with him. He looks at you, and you can see, like you can see the nervousness. He's like, "I, I want to give good impression." Ah, uh, Link Skulk has uses. Uh, you, you do have uses, Slink Skulk. Were it not uh, for the Blood Fangs tunnels, it would have been very bad. You are thanked. Uh, you will be rewarded. There uh, are he, big plans for you, Slink Skulk. He just kind of, yes, boss, but, but this fight, not my best, uh, Foot not forward. my best, not my best environment. I need, uh, he kind of like dances, like, uh, trying to figure out the right words to use. He goes, subtlety, subterfuge, uh. I cause chaos. I don't. I don't fight on front line. That. That's why we we rained death down from above. We are not good fighters. We are good at other things. And so, uh, this was just not my not my field of expertise, uh, boss. I. But i can find things for you boss i can i can help in many ways and i am best of the uh, the blood fangs and i can i can help out in, in different ways boss you have you have need i am the, the 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 person to get those oddities you might want or information, or elimination of things quietly and and uh, without uh, honor. Understood. <laughs> hey, Slink Skulk. What if I told you to spy on the Legion for me? Uh, he is going to make an insight on you. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to determine whether or not this is a test. But he got a 14. Are you are you trying to deceive him? Or I am you... not using trickery. Okay. I uh, am, I'm, if I may, I would like to roll an influence. Okay. Make, make an influence check. Uh, I did not roll good. I got an eight. <laughs> he, 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 you know, you're like, what if I told you to spy on the Legion? He gives you the side eye of like, I'm unsure. But he, he goes, Link Skulk's loyalty, and he puts his hand out to Biddlesby. First. Legion, second. If you have 
need of information or just need want thing of information or things person or supplies or anything uh Slingskulk will get it for you. Legion, Horde, Mudman. Slingskulk will... Slingskulk loyal to Biddles be first. Understood. Yeah. I will send it... for you. And he just kind of like nods. And Slingskulk will find more gift as he backs away and, and like just kind of like flees gracefully yep <laughs> I head back to my tent alright now I'm gonna call and, it for the day okay alright so uh, quick question because that this is the perfect place to wrap it up for now yeah what is your guys' plans moving forward are you wanting to go back to the uh, Legion camp, or are you wanting to build up the crossroads more? I'd say crossroads. If we're looking to maintain a certain degree of uh, autonomy from the Legion, we can 100% tell them we're setting up a forward base, which we are legitimately do so and at the same time establish a fortress over here that we can use to defend or attack as need be it's close enough that sending messages is child's play easy back and forth defends them and at the same time you know if we happen to get in a better position because of it hey sort of happens that way I concur with uh, stilt skin on this okay and, and and Gaiden, uh, what what is your opinions? You think also building up the crossroads? I mean, you've you've worked on a workshop here. <laughs> Gaiden, he might not be he there. Maybe elsewhere. He might be dealing with high pipe. Yeah. I Two out of three. Who's carrying his kid around? So. Yeah. Okay. Well, in that case, you know, we we will aim for that. So then, next session, I can bust out some, you know, some details. Wonderful. And we can, we can go from uh, we can go from there. To uh. Berg is going to help logistically. Oh gosh! Oh gosh! <laughs> That uh, that terrifies me. <laughs> that terrifies me. So you guys are going to be setting up an actual fort, not just a legion fort. Yeah. Is that the, is that the general consensus idea? Yeah. Okay, so you guys are going to be setting up a forward fairy fort. That's going to bring all kinds of forward you know. operating base. Right, but, you know, because it's going to be an actual, like, full-fledged fort, and not just... Probably a not a fairy fort, though, honestly. Um, those, I mean, unless you count the roof of the cave, just because if we actually built a mound in here, it would just be absolute havoc on the logistical lines and uh, established position. You know, it's just, it's, it, it wouldn't work out well. Now, if we built all the way up to the ceiling and turn that into a fairy fort? Absolutely, it, yes. Because the crossroads is a relatively strategic position, it would make sense that if you guys make a more permanent structure here, it would eventually get populated with fairy, other fairies who are- Oh no, I thought you meant, I, I thought you meant the geological formation known as a fairy fort, which is a hollowed out hill. Not like a fort for fairies. It's more like a small um, city state Whoa. kind of. Okay. My bad. Yep. It's similar, Shame on me yeah. for knowing my Celtic mythology. No, yeah, you're similar. good. It is very similar, but it, because you guys are already underground, this is more of a. You know, because in Artemis Fowl series, they had their little um, closer to the surface 
um, cities and stuff. Or er, towns, I guess, would be more akin to it, which yeah. they called the fairy forts. And you guys are making a fort. Yeah. So, like, you know. It makes sense. Yeah, and then that creates jobs and influence. It does. Which then means people move over here. Mm-hmm. All right. You said uh, the only question is Harry Ford. That was the uh, that was the question. Was uh, are are you down to? And there's like there's tunnels branching off from the central hub area. Is that is that essentially what what's going on here? Kind of, yeah. That's our geographical formation is a central chamber with like spokes going out of it. If I was actually reading it right from the way we've described it so far, it's more like we're down one of the branches. We're just down the branch that leads directly to civilization. And what's in front of us is kind of a uh, an intersection, but we're not actually there. We're a little beyond that. At least that's the image I was getting. Kind of, yeah. So the question is, though, how do we market goblins? Because the only way a fort like this works is if you have a, a, a merchandise that you can trade in. So, how do we sell goblins? Well, I mean, you are, you are on the frontiers. Mm-hmm. Well, they make excellent mm-hmm. cooks. That wrong, you know, and you're a glass blower, so... Yes. Yeah. And, I could train a couple of goblins to make torches instead of balls. Right, and you guys are Ooh, already woo. in the process of um, making, like, different, um, essentially, workstations. Oh, I'm down for it. All right, patron state of alchemy. Let's do it. To the lol. So, you know, it's it's one of those things. You got, you, it, it's mostly because the crossroads is a strategic position that it could have the potential to actually grow into a like like a city fort. And because it is also in goblin territory, the fact that most of it will be occupied by goblins means that you could essentially attempt to civilize the goblins a little bit more. <laughs> So, you know, there's a lot of moving parts that go into building a city. I'm sensing a, a miniature localized goblin government going. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Now we've got like, we've got a solid 18 months before we'll be anything close to that. And then that would just be the foundational stage of what would eventually, a decade later, maybe become that. We'll get there. But yeah. On its own, of course. I'm... But with us being around it could become something i no no that 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 is the accelerated rate i may naturally it normally may takes 20 to 50 years putting seeds of distrust to the legion in in the ranks too so who knows? <laughs> in the in the goblin ranks you sowing dis- distrust to the legion amongst goblins i mean what would eventually I mean, become Hundreds years later, a whole race no. divide. <laughs> no, even at this point, you would show up at a bar and you'd be like, "Wow, those legions—they might make a couple of decisions that aren't quite right." And all the goblins would be like, "Dude, yeah, let me tell you." <laughs> I'll tell you what. I know. I know. <laughs> all right. Well then, uh, that is a good place for us to call it for now. Wonderful. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in to The Fair Before the Foul, episode 5, continued. Because <laughs> last week the power went out. So sorry about that. It's all going to get edited together. So, um, it'll just be one episode on the YouTube page if, if you want to go watch it there. Um, all righty. Uh, anything big going on in your life? Starting with Stiltskin. Go. 
Uh, my own tabletop role-playing game, which I've been writing, has a completed combat system and thus is technically a completed 1.1 version Ooh. that is now playable. And I started the worst campaign ever. We are, uh, I mean, in real life, not in my game. Uh, we're calling old prospects at work. Nice. We're trying to sell lawn care to people who haven't talked to us in two years. Fun. Ooh. Fun. Mm -hmm. The hard sells. Yep. Oh, yeah. Why'd your numbers go down this month? Maybe because you gave me the list of clientele that hate us? <laughs> For the 97th time, I did not say lawn chair. I said <laughs> lawn care. <laughs> Cannot tell you how many old people we get that with. Oh, my goodness. I don't want to buy no lawn chairs. <laughs> My goodness. All righty. Um, Gaiden, anything big going on in your life? If you're available. Pass. Pass. <laughs> pass. He says pass. Understood. Um, how about how about you there? Our wonderful master of games. Give a round of applause for our wonderful master of games, Corn's Demon. Um, I'm not up to anything uh, at the moment. Uh, currently, just uh, trying to finish a couple small projects, and then uh, we will see what happens from there. Alrighty, wonderful. Um, yeah. No stream tomorrow or during this weekend. Family vacation. Uh, streams return Monday, maybe. Hopefully. We'll see when. Um, other than that, I think that's that. Thank you guys so much once again for tuning in and chilling with us as we both play through and learn uh, the DC20 system. So, thank you so much. It means a lot, and it was a blessing to have all of you with us today. And I hope you were just as blessed. Take care, everyone! Bye! Bye-bye! Aha! Bye. The troll with strength of stone Haven but his ancient home Blending ages milk and honey Folk with brass, the mud men's irony All the tales of night and day Grit and magic, steel and clay Got hidden swords, riddles be praised Our gods pass in a wild race It's the, the fair before the foul The fair before the foul Harbinger of twilight's call Dances through the midnight star